Hey folks, we are back on the dev stream. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm a lead software engineer at Form. Form is the software that powers dev. And I'm Christina Gorton, the developer advocate at Form. And today we have Andrew Brown, the wonderful Andrew Brown joining us. Andrew, tell us about yourself a little. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Brown. I'm the uh, co-founder of Exam Pro. You might also know me from the 100 Days of Cloud. I'm also an AWS community hero. And what I'm known for is making a lot of free cloud courses that I publish uh, to uh, free Code Camp. So generally, they are focused around certification. So that could be for AWS, Azure, GCP. And recently, I have a course out for Terraform uh, for HashiCorp, and that's why we're here today. And so I'm hoping to uh, you know, uh, go through and teach some basics of uh, Terraform uh, and do something fun. Exactly. Yeah, no, and Nick and I do not know Terraform at all. So we are Terraform newbies for anyone else who might be. And Andrew's going to walk us through all this because that's what he does. He's good at teaching people who are new to stuff. Um, yeah. Do we know where we want to start, Andrew or Nick? I, I, well, 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 sorry. I think, yeah, I think uh, you wanted... we get... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to say, ahead. I think you wanted to kind of give a rundown of kind of what we're going to go mm -hmm. through. Well, before awesome. we get started here, if anyone is in the comments, I would like you to drop your uh, Twitter handle because if you do, I can get you uh, access to my full course with practice exam and additional things. So I'm just going to say hello in the chat here. So hey, everybody that is watching, is watching. I'm going to repeat that a few times. So yeah, again, if you drop your Twitter Twitter handle, apparently I'm not logged into Twitch, so I cannot oh, no. comment. So I'm just going to take two seconds and go ahead and log into that. And I think today I'm going to be 100 days of cloud. <laughs> awesome. Cloudy. <Okay. laughs> oh, boy. And now I have to do a security thing. Of course. Oh, it's OK. That's why we're live streaming. It's, you know, something is always. You got to have these things. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, I might just I turn my we'll... audio off. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I, I, th I think what we'll do is before we just jump into the code, I just want to uh, walk uh, Nick and Christina through trying to understand what is the benefits of Terraform. And so I do have some slides and some maybe I'll reference some code uh, as a reference uh, with the actual form or uh, self-host database so that we fully understand as to why we would want to uh, use Terraform as opposed to something like mm -hmm. configuration management like Bash Scripts or Ansible. Um, yeah. And so I think I'm logged in now. Hey, everybody. We'll just say that. Remember? Okay. There we go. I see 100 Days of Cloud. I'm going to reply to you. Oh, we already got oh, one. We got a Life Twitter. Of the, at Life of the Dur. Come get it. <laughs> okay, cool. And so as the stream goes, I'm going to collect everybody's. I'm going to do my best to try to collect everybody's Twitter handle here. At the end of it, you'll get a DM from me, uh, and uh, you'll get access to that course there. Okay. so. Uh, I cool, cool. think we can get started here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, share my screen. And so I'm just going to make sure I have something to show. Looking for my slides here. All right. And we look for the share button here. Too many screens. Too many screens. Um, well, uh, while Andrew's doing that, quick check, Christina. Is my volume still a lot louder than you think? I can turn it down a bit. It's loud. We can ask the audience here. Is Nick really loud compared to the rest of us? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I can tell. To us, we, we hear. All right. Let's see here. Well, no answers yet. I'll I'll turn it down if uh, if need be though. You you okay. won't notice a difference yourselves, but uh, I'll modify it in OBS so that uh, others. Uh, hey, cool. I am Anyone glad is here. See my screen? Oh, said audio is yeah. fine. Hey, Vlad. Okay, cool, cool. I do see your your uh, Discord popping up at the top of your screen share, though. Oh, it's because oh, you got your whole desktop showing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got too many. I got too many monitors here. It's going to be a bit of a mess. So oh, anyway, okay. before we get to it, <laughs> let's just learn a little bit about infrastructure as a code. Uh, and so you know what, uh, everyone thinks I'm really smart, but the thing is, I just have really good notes, and I go, always go back to them. So just to start off, what is infrastructure as a code? Well, it's used to write configuration scripts to automate, creating, updating, destroying cloud infrastructure. And the way I like to think of it, it's like a blueprint of your infrastructure. Uh, and the great advantage is here, you can share, version, or inventory your, your cloud stuff. So see down below here. I know it's hard to see because it's a uh, because of the stream, but the idea is you write a script, and then whatever yep. resources you need, whether it's storage, compute, networking, machine learning, whatever you can, uh, you were able to click through on AWS uh, or uh, uh, GCP or Azure, you'll be able to use a script for that. 
Um, and there's a lot of providers uh, that allow you to, or tooling out there for infrastructure as a code. So there's things like ARM templates, Azure Blueprints, CloudFormation, uh, Cloud Deployment Manager, CDK, Terraform, and Plumi. Mm -hmm. uh, but today we're gonna really focus just on Terraform because it uh, is kind of like super powered in the sense that it actually works with all the providers out there. So, you know, if you're looking to use more than one uh, cloud service provider, which is becoming a lot more common these days, like using okay. AWS and Azure together or GCP and DigitalOcean, um, this makes it a really great option. But one thing that is really special about this is that it has its own uh, language called HCL. So you're probably familiar with YAML, you're probably familiar mm -hmm. with JSON or using a programming language, but what is HCL? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pull that up here and see if we can easily okay. find that. Um, and it is here. So uh, HCL stands for HashiCorp Configuration Language. It's an open source toolkit for creating structured configuration languages. And it's okay. really nice because it has a little bit more flexibility than a YAML file, but it's not so intense like a, a full, uh, full blown programming language where you're gonna kind of shoot yourself in the foot. And so, okay, you gotcha. know, hopefully by the end of this, I'll be convinced to you that HCL files are really, really good. And so um, Terraform uh, has a version of it because you don't just use the bare bones HCL, they kind of extend it. It's like a base language. And so okay. there's a bunch of uh, DevOps tools out there or, um, things that leverage that. So cool, eh? Okay. And but before we continue, so HCL, the HashiCorp configuration language, I imagine it's obviously created by HashiCorp. They must use it all around and they, and people, like you oh, said, yeah. have just built on it. So, uh, and I guess that's also to just kind of like if people end up working on other things, like the transition to work on another project is pretty pretty low in terms of like picking it up because it's, even if it's built on top of HCL, it's still, HCL under the hood. Yeah, well, when you think of DevOps, right, a lot of people are saying like, I'm not a programmer, I'm a scripter, I can handle XML, but don't give me don't give me Python or Ruby. And so it's just like one step in the direction to give them a lot more control. It's kind of, you know, like how people like PowerShell or Bash Scripts, it's yeah, not yeah. like a full blown language, but, um, uh, you know, it gives them more power. But in terms of the DevOps world, HCL looks very popular, at least in the HashiCorp uh, tools. These are all mostly HashiCorp tools. And then Shipyard is okay. Uh, not necessarily that. And then there's like Terra Grunt and they use them as well. So, you know, hopefully we'll see more of these, but uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good medium, I would say. Okay. Um, so, you know, that is what we're going to be looking at a lot here, but before we jump into actual Terraform, let's look at how we would traditionally deploy a server or maybe how dev's been doing it uh, up to this point here, at least for their self-hosted stuff. So I actually have some code over here and this is the self-hosted uh, repository. Um, okay. And so, you know, are, how would you both define Ansible, if you were to describe it? Uh, I just followed the instructions <laughs> in okay. the README, and I deployed my cell phones. <laughs> but it, uh, it 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 definitely seems like a configuration file. But you and then you generate encrypted uh, keys or passwords for certain sections of it. Uh, I, I believe there was. I can't remember if it was. Linux based tools that just did that or for like built in ones or if it was uh, if there was Ansible an Ansible seal I honestly can't remember because it's it's not something I do uh, in my day to day. Sure, sure. Yeah, Ansible is for automating makes lots of automations a lot easier. Um, I have only played with it a little bit on helping with the self host. Uh, but that is the gist that I get from it and why our systems team likes it just to okay. automate a bunch of things. So so before, again, I'm just trying to cement our knowledge into what we're looking at. So before we do that, let's just go even one step back further and talk about APIs. And so with APIs, um, you know, most people are familiar with those being things like I write an HTTP request and I get stuff back. And that's a particular type of HTTP, HTTP by, but uh, usually yeah. we don't interact with those on a regular basis, right? Um, we are going to be using the CLI, which are command lines, or we're gonna be using SDKs. And so, okay. you know, like AWS has an SDK uh, and I have it pulled up here and I'm just trying to find a simple piece of code, anything that's simple, yeah. uh, which doesn't seem to be easy sure. today. So if I type in like something like <laughs> S3 AWS SDK Ruby, and I love okay. Ruby, I, hopefully everybody here does too. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just mention one thing. If you could just zoom in your browser a little bit, if you just uh, command plus or control plus a couple. Yeah, oh, perfect. Yeah. There we go. Just that's for good. the folks on the stream. Thanks. So, and then I have one question too. Sorry, we keep interrupting you. Someone oh, yeah. in the chat <laughs> wants to know if they can give you their email instead of a Twitter. I'm assuming they don't have Twitter. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, that's the only way today. So if you do not have Twitter, you got to go make one uh, and help. Uh, but you got some time here, okay? Awesome. Cool. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do here, sorry. So the idea here is that you know the SDK allows you to programmatically interact with AWS, and in in that sense, you're able to provision resources, right? So yeah. you know. I could say like, hey, I want to create an S3 bucket and there's like a create S3 bucket command somewhere here. So if I went here, like, um, I don't know, there's a create bucket. You think I would know this create bucket, AWS S3. Friendly reminder uh, that everybody Googles folks. Even well, folks I've been doing this for a long time. Day. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and so if I go here, whoops. Uh, we'll do this here. So that's how you create a bucket, right? You go down here and you yeah. would specify this amount of code, right? Um, and that's great. Uh, the only issue with this is that when you provision resources with the API directly via the SDK or use a tool yeah. like Ansible, what's going to happen is it's going to create that resource. But what happens if you run it again? What's going to happen? Okay, so it's it's not idempotent is what you're saying. Yeah, it's not idempotent. So so the idea is that when you use an SDK or Ansible, um, it's it's what it's going to do is if you create it once and then you try to create it again, it's going to say, "Hey, this bucket already exists. You can't create a second bucket." Or, yeah. uh, or in a more disastrous sense, if you try to launch a virtual machine, uh, it will just make another one. So you'll end up with two. Yeah. Then you'll end up with three. And you'll end up with four. And so okay. the idea behind infrastructure as a code, when we say idempotent or however it's pronounced is that if you say, I only want to have <laughs> the state of a single virtual machine configured this particular way, no matter how yeah. many times you deploy it, you're always going to end up with one. And if you change the configuration, it will just adjust the existing one. And and that is the, uh, key, okay, okay, gotcha. the key thing to understand. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so just to, to let that soak in for a sec. So by default, the configuration is item potent, no matter how many times you, you do it over and over. But as soon as you have a minor change, the existing config that isn't the changes is still item potent, and then the new stuff just gets added on, and then everything's item potent from that point again. And then it, it can create it, it could update it, it might have to just completely destroy the resource and replace it. But the point is, is that you don't have to worry about that. I have a slide here, uh, item potent, right? So, right, if you were to have two, like if you ran it, yeah. then you'd end up with a set of two. But that's the idea modifying, deleting, or creating. So, that's stuff that you don't have to worry about. Right. Gotcha. Someone would like to know if this is like version control. Um, is it version control? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, because it's more it's more about state management, right? So, like, because the thing is that you can take uh, infrastructure code and put it uh, into your uh, version repo, and then that would have it, right? So when you are doing this, it doesn't say if I was to deploy a second time. It's not like it's like version two. There's no way you can roll back to version one, right? So you still okay. need a versioning tool like a repository to do that. And by the way, when you do merge or you utilize um, uh, a Git repository alongside your IAC, that's where we get GitOps, right? So if you ever heard of GitOps? That's all it means. It's like I am uh, doing all my infrastructure through GitOps, and when I make a pull request, it's going to automatically set up that infrastructure for me. Okay. Cool. Okay, I see what you mean. So just just to unpack that for for folks. So you have your your infrastructure's code in a in a repository. You pull it down, and then you just say run it. That's that's the TLDR. Yeah. So yeah, and I got a, I got I got slides upon top of slides. But yeah, that's the idea. You put your code in here. You make, <laughs> making you make it rain with the slides. <laughs> oh yeah, all day long here. Uh, so you know that's the idea behind GitOps, which is becoming very popular. There's some challenges around that, but uh, yeah, it's it's just right off the bat you're able to manage your stuff. So. Um, but if we just go back over to um, the actual uh, uh, self-host repository, people don't know there's a repository on GitHub called uh, Form Self-Host. And what this allows you to do is if you want to deploy your own version of Form, if people don't know what Form are, and you really should if you're on this <laughs> live stream, but but uh, if you've ever been on Dev, Dev is powered by this uh, software called Forum. And Form is a form, um, you know, and this repository in particular shows you how to self-host your own. And what it's using is Ansible. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with Ansible. Ansible actually plays really well with Terraform. Uh, but 
usually you use configuration management to configure your server, not necessarily provision infrastructure resources. So in here, uh, if we were to go take a look at some Ansible, they're under here called Playbooks. And okay. if you go into providers here, you can see that uh, we have some for different providers. And if we go into the AWS one, we have- I'm gonna interrupt you real quick. I know you're in a flow, but someone just wants to know if you could uh, to, zoom, to zoom, zoom in, in again. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. So, um, but uh, you know, if we're looking at a provider like AWS, this is Ansible and Ansible is written in YAML. And so, um, YAML's fine, but the thing is, is that when we go through here, we can see these tasks and these are basically the steps to what it's going to perform, right? And I'm not sure if it's done sequentially, I think it's just done in order, but here the idea is that it's going to generate out that butane file um, here, it's gonna put it in an S3 bucket. Um, and then it, when we get down here, we're gonna see things like it's going to create a route tables, a VPC endpoint, an S3 bucket, it's going to set up a, um, a EC2 key, it's going to create an EC2 group, it's EC2, maybe a security group there, sorry. Um, and it's gonna launch an EC2 instance. And this is fine, but this is extremely verbose. Like if you see how much you're writing there, if you use something like Terraform or even CloudFormation, it's going to be mm -hmm. a lot uh, easier to read. It's gonna be a lot more uh, reduced. But the other problem mm -hmm. with this is again, you know, if you run it twice, you're gonna end up with it twice. And so generally you don't want to be using Ansible uh, in this way, not for these kind of actions, even though you can, unless for some reason you want to have multiple servers but everything that comes after this, um, and there's not a lot would um, would be used. So um, actually, but the thing is the way a, a form is architectured because it uses an ignition file to to uh, mount, uh, I don't even think you need the Sansible file at all. You could probably completely replace it with Terraform and it'd be like this big, okay? Mm. Um, but anyway, you know, hopefully that kind of gives you a, a, a point in terms of that. Uh, so yeah, maybe we can, uh, jump into doing some Terraform now and see if we can set ourselves up a server. Well, you got awesome. Any, I'm gonna uh, open my window real quick. This is why I'm moving yeah, away, yeah. just because it's really dark in here. <laughs> yeah, not not so, not a not a window on your computer, your uh, actual physical window. <laughs> uh, cool. Quick question before we get started there, Andrew. So there's mm -hmm. Terraform. I'm assuming there's several other flavors of infrastructure as code. Uh, mm -hmm. Like is like what other what other options do folks have in terms of infrastructure as, as code? Sure. So every single provider uh, uh, usually has their own thing. So like AWS has CloudFormation, uh, Azure okay. has um, ARM temp templates, sorry, and uh, GCP has uh, Google Deployment Manager, and then Oracle just uses Terraform. When you uh, okay. so those are the main three. But when you look at smaller clouds like DigitalOcean, they don't even have anything. They probably just use digital. Uh, they just probably use Terraform, right? Or if mm, you okay. or maybe Heroku or anything like that. But if I just kind of show you an example here, this is what CloudFormation looks like. So this is setting up an EC2 instance with CloudFormation and it's written in a YAML file, right? So that's what that would look okay. like. Gotcha. If we wanted to compare that against uh, um, Terraform here, we go registry.terraform. I'm just gonna keep telling you to zoom in when you go places. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. I, I just have mine permanently zoomed at this point, which is probably not a good thing because I'm doing front end dev. Everything's so big. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for example, if we go into AWS here and we wanted to see what the same kind of code looked like in Terraform, I would go over the documentation, mm -hmm. okay? And when it decides to load here, and I will, I'll zoom in once we get to the right page here. And then I would type in EC2 instances because I just remembered that's what it's named. Yeah. And if you can't find what it is that you're looking for, you can always just go like EC2 instance into Google uh, Terraform and it usually mm. is a lot better at finding it. So okay. yeah, there is AWS instance. I named it wrong. Okay. And I'll get you, I'll get you to zoom in again. <laughs> oh yeah, just Wait. let let me get parked on that uh, example first. And so I will just kind of bump it up. And if we scroll on down here, we should be able to uh, see an example. Uh, example usage. Sorry, it's up here. And so this is example here. So this is how you would uh, do it in Terraform. And this is using HCL. Okay. And then over here, this is what cloud formation looks like, right? So, you know, um, I mean, it's up to you saying like, is this easier to read or is this easier to read? Is this more verbose or is this less verbo verbose? Does this have certain limitations that we can't do because we're restricted by YAML where we get that kind of flexibility with Terraform? Mm. So, okay. But um, 
I, I would say that once you learn any kind of a IAC tool, you generally can translate that knowledge over. It's really just the obstacles around the, the language itself, like what you can do with HCL versus what you can do with YAML. But the concepts are, are, are translate pretty well, I would say. Okay. So, so, you know, hopefully that kind of gives you a fundamentals in terms of, you know, what is Terraform and how it compares against other things. I think it's time to let someone drive. And if Nick, you want to do the driving, I'll stop my screen here and we'll take mm -hmm. a look yeah. at what you got and see what we can achieve here. Awesome. Yeah. And just to let you know, Andrew, I've been collecting the, the Twitter usernames for you. So you don't need to worry about that. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on a sec. It would help if I had my VS code. I've, I've seen someone's talking about Plumi in the. Uh, I actually, I, I, I actually want to make a Plumi video at some point, but I just haven't had the time. Mm -hmm. Plumi is a um, oh, another ISP tool. Yeah, I just okay. remember talking to them before so... I joined Forum as a developer advocate. <laughs> All right, so there we go. It would help if I share my screen. It was just hiding there. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to avoid the mistake I normally do. I'm not going to try and start typing in the Discord because that's just a screen share. I'm going to go to my actual browser. OK, <laughs> uh, so before before we get started, folks, uh, we're in Gitpod. If you don't know what Gitpod is, check out gitpod.io. It's a cloud development environment. Codespaces is another one. There, there's others out there. Uh, like Code Sandbox, which is, I think, more front end focused, but uh, uh, in Gitpod and Code Spaces, I know you can do containerization and all that. So we're going to work in Gitpod today. And yeah, let's get to it, I guess, Andrew. You should have told Pauline she would have showed up for this. Pauline's the, the DA. I think she's DA. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I completely fought, forgot we were going to do it in Gitpod, but uh, we could give yeah. her a shout out on Twitter, maybe. Cool. So um, yeah, the thing with GetPods, uh, as Nick is saying, is that you know if you need an environment really quickly, you can just type in the name of the URL on the top. Um, and so I actually have a repository. Could you, Nick? Could you just show them where that uh, that repository is on a new tab, maybe? Um, yeah. For the Terraform. It was uh, Exam Pro. What was it? Uh... Uh, I would just type in yeah, just do Exam Pro Co. Capital E, Capital P, Capital C, and then we'll just navigate from there to find it. Yeah. So what Nick is navigating to here is the labs for my uh, my Terraform associate course. It's an exam pro co. That's a that's a different kind of example. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is <laughs> that is definitely it, not that it. Is what that is? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was it? Exam confusion. Pro oh, here co. it is. You got it. Thank you for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Shout out to and, all the OBGYNs though. Uh, and maybe yeah, yeah, and maybe not the best documented um, uh, repo. Like I don't have a lot of readmes in here, but all the videos <laughs> in my course um, uh, go through these, so it makes sense. But you know, if you wanted to open this yourself, what you could do is just before the word GitHub.com. I think it's what is it? Gitpod.io forward slash. Yeah. Um, it uh, looks like slash this, uh... hashtag. Or if yeah. you see what Nick has, he has a Gitpod button. You can get an extension installed. And that on your GitHub, and then you press that and it'll launch that environment. So that's a really great way yeah. to get started. If anyone who wants to just launch it up and take a look, you can click the link here in the Twitch stream, okay? Um, but what yeah. we'll do is go back to the environment that uh, um, Nick has provisioned for us. And even though we have all these great folders here, um, I just did that because we needed something to launch. And so Nick, if you can do mm -hmm. me a favor, go ahead and make yourself a new folder on the right-hand side. Sure. Uh, and maybe we'll just call it like uh, 99 or 999 underscore uh, Nick, it's not going to end up in the real uh, repository here. So anyone that's watching here, uh, this code's not going to be available later. But don't worry, basically, it mirrors a lot of the stuff we're seeing here on the right-hand side. And so yeah. for us to get working with Terraform, there's a there's a one prerequisite, which we did off screen just because we wanted to keep our credentials secure. But you had to, whatever provider you're going to use, AWS, Azure, GCP, you have to authenticate, get your credentials or what have you. We'll talk about that in a moment here. Uh, but once yeah. you have that, we need to get the Terraform CLI installed because everything is powered through that CLI. So, Nick, what I want you to do is make a new tab, type in Terraform uh, CLI install, and we'll go get those instructions from the HashiCorp Learn website. Okay, question while we're doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone wants to know, does that mean if you know how to write the .tf file in H? CL, then you'd be able to provision all kinds of platforms. That's correct. And Terraform is able to provision not just in AWS, Azure, GCP, 
but it can do things like um, uh, Kubernetes. If it can do things like Spotify, which is a very bizarre one. It can do <laughs> things like uh, set up a Minecraft server. Basically, if there's an API, you can write a provider for it, and that's the 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 true power of um, a Terraform. So so Nick has gone over to the Hashcript Learn website. Great website. And so if you just uh, scroll there to the top there, there's a tab and it says Ubuntu, CentOS, Fedora, Amazon Linux. Oh, down. Go down, Nick. Yeah, so, yeah I already went to it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and so what we're doing here is I believe we're in an Ubuntu environment. So what we're going to do is go start copying those lines. So we'll go grab the first one there and just uh, start pasting them on in. Yeah, I ran it while we were. Uh, oh, OK, so cool. It's all so, so all of it? I uh, ran the first line there. All right, we got uh, more lines to go. Oh, geez. All right, here we yeah. go. Copy. Oh, yeah. A little copy pasta going on here. I'll close yeah. the sidebar. Okay. It doesn't take too long to install. I think the only dependency for the Terraform CLI might be... No, actually, you know what? It's probably written in Go, because they love using Go over there at HashiCorp. <laughs> and so it's going to be a single okay. binary, so we don't even have to solve Python or anything. That'll be great. OK. Yay. Yeah, it's like Rust. Had a lot too. of Python. Python problems on my Mac lately. So, we got uh, 99 Python, Python, Python problems. Python That's Jay Z's got <laughs> 99 Python problems. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so I installed the GB. Uh, I can't say it properly. GPG key, and then I uh, added the uh, the third one here, and I'm just gonna install the Terraform CLI here now. And that's going on. Okay, so then I guess we'll need to verify the installation in a minute. My bed's messy too, Andrew. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a bed in my office, but maybe I should just get one for the stream so I can have a messy bed too. This is technically a, a guest bed, not my bed. But... <laughs> yeah, okay. same story here, but... I could always just put a bean bag and cut it open like it got destroyed or something. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So that's all done. Yeah. So. So I guess we'll just ensure that the Terraform CLI is installed now, Andrew. Yep. So if you just type in Terraform or Terraform help, that will work as well. And so we have it installed. It was that easy. So hey. what I want you to do is CD on into your uh, 999 uh, uh, NIC directory there. And we're going to start uh, yeah. making some stuff here. So we'll start with AWS because I think that might be, uh, I'm a more familiar with it. And then we might try to experiment and do DigitalOcean. So... Okay. Um, the first file we're going to need is a main.tf file. Now, honestly, you can name it whatever you want, but just by uh, convention, people like to name it main.tf. Okay, so just write main.tf. TF, TF uh, oh, stands TF. for okay. Terra Terraform, so that's why we want it yeah. there. Okay. Okay. Uh, the interesting thing about Terraform is that you can, uh, the, the folder that you're in is all considered a single module. And you can, as long as you create a bunch of Terraform files, it will treat it all as a single file, like stitch them all together. Okay. Oh, okay. So, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, but we'll just start with a single one for the time being. And okay. uh, what we'll do is we'll just open that file up here because we're uh, in terminal here. Yeah. All right. So that's open. Great. And so, Usually the way you configure Terraform is you type Terraform and then you make curly braces to uh, make the configuration block. Yeah. And by default, if you just do that, you're using local Terraform, meaning the state file that will be generated that's going to say, what is the state of your infrastructure is gonna be stored locally, okay? Okay. Um, so we do wanna use AWS, so we're going to go need to configure this provider. So what I want you to do is once you get your comments in there, uh, make a new tab and type in uh, provider, or sorry, um, registry.terraform. Okay. Registry.what? You, you cut out. Oh, for sorry. A in, in a new tab, we're going to go to a website because we're going to go grab the code. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to borrow a lot of code because we do not have time to, uh, uh, to memorize. <laughs> so, registry I don't, terraform I don't example. Any. I copy paste it. Oh, no, just registry.terraform.com. Okay. So, so the registry is where we can find our providers and our modules, okay? You're going to be coming to the site a lot, or sorry, .io. That's what's cool, okay. .io. Good old and so providers, providers is a one-to-one -one API mapping with your, well, almost one-to-one -one mapping with your, um, there's two big buttons down below to click providers there, um, yeah. with your, uh, your cloud service provider, whatever you have. And modules are going to be like um, uh, 
reusable code that you can use to make it go a lot faster. So let's click on providers. Yeah. It's a big button. And you're going to be presented with a bunch here. So we got AWS, Azure, Google Platform, Alibaba, Kubernetes, Oracle Cloud. And I know you don't see it, but uh, DigitalOcean is in there and a bunch of others are as well, uh, like Voltaire okay. and anything you can think of is in here, right? So if you scroll mm -hmm. all the way to the top, we're going to go into AWS. And on the top right corner, you got a, a purple button that says use provider. So drop on down that button. And then see where we have, it already has the, the same block. So just copy all of that. Nice. And then just okay. re replace your existing Terraform settings block. Okay. And I'm okay. just going to bring down the, whoops. Just going to hide the term. Uh, whoops. Uh, that's yeah, what. It's, it's that's really what, it's really hard live streaming and coding at the same time. It's so hard. No, no, it's not that. It's I have the uh, shortcuts in VS Code and some of them don't work in the browser because the browser native stuff takes over. So when I when I went to go hide the console, it switched tabs. Uh, anyways. Cool. So when you're using Terraform, you're only allowed to have one single Terraform setting blocks across all your files within the single module. Again, a module is the current directory you're in. Like if you make a folder that uh, and make files so that, that'd be considered a separate module or sub-module. So here we're okay. specifying AWS. The source is HashiCorp uh, forward slash AWS. That's saying that HashiCorp actually made the provider for AWS. Okay. So it's not. Like it's official, but it's not made by AWS, which is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the version. And then down below, there's the provider, which is outside of the Terraform settings block. This is where you put your configuration configuration options. So you could put your access key, your secret, your region. Um, if okay. you have your access key and secret within your credentials file, which we did before this call, it's going to get auto-loaded through environment variables. So okay. what I want you to do is type in region base equals... Um, and by the way, anyone who's watching the chat, if you if you ask a question, I'll answer it here. It's uh, you can totally totally talk, uh, and yeah. then make a double quotations. And we're just gonna yeah. hard code our region just so that we don't have to worry about things um, going the wrong place. So we'll do U.S. East one. Uh, the reason we're doing U.S. East one is because that is the original AWS region. That is the most popular AWS region, and all services are available there. So um, you know, if we don't want to have trouble, we always just do use U.S. East one, even though. Uh, Nick and I are in Canada, and we should be using the Canada region. But and the Canada one's actually in Montreal, by the way. So Nick, it might be next yeah, door. Hey. You might not even know it, eh? I'll uh, go grab a poutine and uh, go check out AWS. Cool. So um, we specified our provider. And so now what we need to do is provision ourselves a resource. And I think always uh, starting off, what's really good is doing an AWS instance. So what you okay. can do is go back to the registry.terraform.io website, whichever the tab you had open. And yeah. if you go all the way to the top and click on documentation, all right. and all the providers are like this. And by the way, yeah. whenever you enter the documentation, when you're on this first tab, it almost always contains uh, configuration information. So if you scroll down, you might see something said, like saying like authentication, right? So every provider is different. Yeah like wildly different. And so this is what I was always looking for this page. And so, you know, whenever you enter there, just scroll down, you'll find it on that, okay? But uh, yeah. what we want is we want to launch an EC2 instance, a virtual machine. And so on the left-hand side where it says filter, yeah, right? Do you see like the list where it says ACM, API gateway, app runner, yeah. app config? Those are AWS resources. Those are AWS services, right? And so somewhere in there, there's EC2. Just scroll down, see if you can find EC2. Don't even search for it. Just uh, clear okay. it out. And let's scroll down and if we can just find it. It should all be alphabet, 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 it A to Z. There we I go. I can't say it, alphabet of size. And so, <laughs> um, and so, and uh, we get a question here. Uh, when should we use a provider versus module? Okay, so that's by Nash here. Or Cabinash. Yeah. I'm Cabinash. So you use a provider when like a lot of times I just jump right into modules because I prefer to do it. But uh but generally like it's just, like providers are just the bare bone pieces, right? So you'd say, okay, okay, I want to launch an EC2 instance, I want to launch a security group, I want to launch a route fifty three fifty three endpoint. But sometimes, you know, that becomes very laborious. And so Mm -hmm. If you want to create yeah. a bunch of stuff all in one go, you'd use a you use a module and a module. Well, we'll get to that here today. But a module just like is like a small DSL. It's like an easier way to provision a lot of stuff together. Mm -hmm. When you're yeah. using Azure, you absolutely have to use modules because when you launch an EC2 instance, the file is like this big if you use the provider. 
Okay. okay. So, so is it similar to what you were mentioning, like what what we have right now in form self host with the Ansible files, where it's like you know it's saying do the EC2 instance, blah blah blah. Yeah. Is that similar to what the providers would be doing versus? Yes. Yeah, okay. because because Ansible is not going to uh, like ref like if you if you made like a uh, your own little module or like your own piece of side code that ran it all that's all what a module is on on Terraform. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just yeah. some providers I'm just directly using or sorry some um, yeah cloud service providers I'm using the provider directly. In other cases, I'm using modules. When I use AWS, I like to use the AWS Terraform modules. But uh, okay. like half the time and half the time I'm using the providers with Azure, I'm heavily using modules. For GCP, I'm just using the provider. It's just going to vary, OK? Um, OK. So uh, yeah, we're going to make our way over to the EC2 instance. And so it's not called EC2 here. It's called AWS underscore instance. And you know, if you don't know what it is, just always Google it. And then you'll learn over time what it is called. So scroll down there. It's all alphabetized. For information purposes, someone would like to know where is our backend? What is our backend? Where's so our backend? the backend, and that's an important question to ask. And so, oh, sorry. So, I mean, it depends where you're asking that. So if we're talking about the provider, the backend is AWS, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But if we're talking about the Terraform backend, like where is the state file going to be stored? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's quite, Right now, it's on our local machine. OK, so when we run this script, it's going to produce a Terraform state file, which is a JSON file. And that is that is where our backend technically is. But we can okay. take our backend and store it other places. So there's Terraform Cloud, or we can even store it in Cloud Storage, which we'll find out here shortly. Cool. Um, okay. So we will scroll down here, and we'll just see if we can kind of get an example. OK. Is this one here, or so should I go further? I would take this one, up, but what I would do to make it really simple, I would just take where it says resource AWS instance and just take that code block there. Okay. Cool. Oops. As a follow up, uh, they said S3 or Terraform. So when you <laughs> uh, when you can do both for backends, but like I would recommend using Terraform. Okay, so Terraform Cloud is a um, it's it has a free tier, a very generous free tier where you can um, uh, store your state file in. And it has okay. a bunch of stuff built on top of it to make GitOps really easy. You can store it on S3 as well as a remote backend, but uh, you know there's particular use cases why you'd want to do that. But generally, it's not recommended, like by me. Okay. I wouldn't say at large. I'd just say by me. <laughs> um, gotcha. So Nick has has pasted in his resource here. So a resource always starts with resource, and then it's yeah. the the name of what it expects to be. So we saw it's called AWS underscore instance. That's what it was in our API for the Terraform provider. And then it's okay. followed by web, which is going to be the name. And when we say it's the name, it's the logical name that's going to be in our state file. It's not going to show up like on AWS. You can name your file. It's not going to show up there. But what okay. we'll name the server is on line 18. See where it says name equals hello world? Yeah. That's how you name things on AWS for servers. You name, you give it a tag called name. So. Go change the okay. name of your uh, your your server there, uh, Nick, if you could. Yeah. Could be Nick's server, form server. Uh, I'm going to go server. with YOLO. YOLO. OK. And so there's a few things we need to uh, notice here. See on line 14, it says AMI. That stands for Amazon Machine Image. And that just okay. means it's the image we're going to use. Then we have instance type. So that's a T3 micro, which is pretty good. Uh, but what we want to do is get the Amazon machine image. And so what I want you to do is clear out where it says data. Everything after the data, clear that out. Yeah. Keep the equals. We're going to make double quotations. And so what we need to do is we need to put in here some kind of ID. So go make your way back to AWS. Yeah. Can you explain dynamic blocks? Not yet. We're, that's too far ahead. Okay, to my console, Amy? We'll get there. Dynamic oh, yeah. blocks will come up later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We're so far away from that right now. But, um, yeah. Did you want me to so, go to the, I, the IM console, or where did you want me to go? Uh, yeah, so make your way over to AWS. And so yeah. we're going to make our way over to the EC2 console. So yeah, just click on IM console, get AWS, and uh, you just expose your credentials. Yes, I did. Which yes, was I the did. number I... one thing we said not to do in the stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no I know. It's, and and okay, you, so... you said, don't close the window, and then we moved on to other things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what you're gonna do, Nick? You're, you're multi-screen right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this one. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna delete your. <laughs> yeah. Now no, we're doing that on good. screen, people. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, Vlad yeah. Feels like if Vlad's watching, he's gonna run at this right now. He, Vlad, he's, don't he's do on, it. He, he, I I saw Vlad on there. 
I know he's here. Mean, Vlad. I don't know if Vlad this. would do it, but like, <laughs> if Vlad wanted to troll me right now, I I, uh, I would understand. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I typically am good with this. It's just because uh, we got distracted and the modal stayed open. Anyways, uh, okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to generate new Azure credentials. Azure Blueprint or Terraform? Terraform. I, okay. Like, ARM templates are okay, but like you get a lot more flexibility with Terraform. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go, I'm going to drag out the Git pod for a sec off the, the sure. live screen share. Just so sure. I can so, update the credentials. So what Nick is doing is what we call rotating your keys. So if you think your keys have been exposed uh, on a live stream <laughs> or in a repository, what you do is you deactivate them, you delete them, you generate out new ones, and then you privately uh, put new ones in where nobody sees. <laughs> I can confirm I did expose my keys and I am currently rotating them. <laughs> We're doing okay. uh, a beginner's first uh, cloud security today. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just for the folks can't see what I'm doing, so I'm we installed the AWS CLI before the stream. So I'm running AWS Space Configure right now, and I'm going to enter in the new AWS Access key in secret, and I will not share it on screen after um, because that would be problematic doing it two times in a row. Yeah, so mistake one time, okay, but uh, all right. So that's set. Uh, going it's to okay, Vlad. We were just saying that you might be trolling, trolling I said, us. I said, Vlad, we had a, <laughs> uh, just coming in right now. Uh, uh, Nick exposed his keys, and I was just saying, like, if anybody, <laughs> if anybody wanted to troll me, Vlad, Vlad could take those keys and spin up some SageMaker instances. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, 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 delicious, but, <laughs> but I wouldn't be mad if he did it. It would, it would cost me like pennies by the time we rotated it out. So. All right, so I added the, I updated the access key in the secret, and uh, yep. I reran AWS S3 LS, and I'm still seeing our S3 instance uh, being outputted, so that's good. Now, uh, I'm gonna close the modal on the IAM console. Where, what section of the IAM console should I go to? Because I don't want to. I'm currently on the users okay. page. Well, I'll just get away from the IAM console. So off okay, I'll, I'll just go. go to the... At the top, just click on the AWS logo. It'll take you back to the um, uh, the homepage or whatever, yeah. whatever okay. they call it, the AWS Management Console. And once you do, all right, I'm going to bring that back here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, and I'm just going to bring. Oh, uh, you're back. not the only one. Vlad said he always leaks his keys too. You're good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, 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 like... if, if you <laughs> if you're not leaking, you're not trying, or something like that. Uh, well, I don't, yeah. there should be like some kind of like uh, Twitch filter for that, eh? Uh, yeah. Did you just show your keys yeah. again? <laughs> Where? I just saw your keys because you didn't clear the console. <laughs> oh, son of a. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll do one I... more time. Yeah, yeah. I okay. didn't see them, but you know no, they no, were there. No, no, no. So. It's yeah, they were. There. <laughs> you gotta rotate them out. Okay. You have to. Uh, I'll just I'll just <laughs> mention this because we're... we're teaching you good good. <laughs> Good bad habits here. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but I will mention something. If if you are using VS Code, there, this is an extension I use. It's called Cloak. And so if you have your .env mm. file open, it will actually mask those keys. But it will not help you in this case. I feel like I should probably create a browser extension to actually hide these on the AWS console or something. But uh, anyways, uh, two times a charm. I'm laughing at myself uh, quite a bit now because. It is kind of funny that I've done it twice. All right. Okay. Let me just deactivate. And we seem to be getting a lot of people following because they're like, hey, let's follow this guy who's not doing these good security practices. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to create the access key again. All right. One of my, one of my buddies, Tom Cuds, in the, uh, in the chat and he he works in that. He's, he's DevOps and he's probably oh, yeah. looking at me like, what are you doing? What are you doing? All right. Yeah. If if you if you leak a third time, we're just playing Hot Wheels on these for the rest of the stream. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna yolo I'm just gonna yolo it. <laughs> All right, that's good. <laughs> okay, just tell me when you're gonna go. Yeah, I'm, I'm you just. You could stop sharing a... the screen for a minute if that helps. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I don't need that. Okay, we're all good there. I am clearing the screen. I am going back. You have to, to make sure you and... disable and delete your keys, which I think you are doing, but just yeah, you know, yeah, Vlad did that. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm just I'm just recreating all new keys and leaving all the exposed keys yeah. for people. Go nuts. Like, for Go the nuts. stream, I'm, I should have set up I should have set up permission boundaries and things like that for for Nick, but like 
he has full admin access to my sandbox. So, oh, you didn't um, have to say that. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking over AWS wow, right that's, now. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right, we're we're in we're in a good state now. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, so now <laughs> that uh, we, yeah, do, yeah. Uh, let's just make sure it's working. Yeah, and. Uh, Let's go back to the AWS Management Console, and we're going to make our way over to EC2. So type in EC2 at the top there. Yeah. Yeah. Just the first one, I imagine. One. Yeah. Yep. And EC2 is like an umbrella service uh, in the sense that, yeah, EC2 is a virtual machine, but a lot of other services are found uh, underneath it as well. And that's why it's such a large uh, like menu on the left-hand side there. What I want you to do yeah. is pretend like we're going to launch a new instance. So on the left-hand side, click on Instances um yeah there on the left hand side and then once you're there what we're going to do is click the launch instance button yeah and so this is where we can find our ami id and actually by the way look where you are in the top right corner it says you're in ohio can you switch over okay. to us east one there yeah it because it, it defaults yeah. you to it always does that to me too we north virginia to, uh, north i guess virginia. us east yeah. oh yeah mm -hmm. right. blue ridge mountain south yep. virginia all right virginia representing Okay. And so uh, it, this is a little bit harder to see, but if you notice um, where it says Amazon Linux 2, and then it's going to say volume type and follow that, it's going to say like AMI hyphen 02 E1 something, something, something. That is the yeah. Amazon machine image. So if you copy the contents of that and okay. uh, just make sure you don't have any spaces on it either. Copy that and we're yeah. going to flip over. And then what we're going to do is go to our Terraform file and paste that on in there. Nope, 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 nope. Never mind. I'm not backpedaling in the console. Forget that. Forget that. <laughs> I don't think you can uh, okay. but just in case, like, yeah. Yeah. it's good, like, fear. Terrible, terrible yeah, yeah. fear. Uh, and so now we have our AMI. And so this is the minimum requirements for you to launch a a, um, a virtual machine, I believe. So what we can do okay. is down below where it says uh, 99 Nick in our, in our uh, terminal there, uh, yep. we're going to type the word Terraform plan. Oh, that's it. Delete bash history. Is there a command for that, or is that the actual command? Yeah, I feel like there is, but... Uh, hey, command, Andrew, somebody, let us know if else. there's a command for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, sorry, you said run Terraform plan? Yeah. So, what Terraform plan does is it's going to create an, an execution plan. Oh, sorry. Okay. Before we do that, anytime we define a provider or a module, we got to install them. So, just, yeah, write Terraform init. Okay. The DX for uh, Terraform is really, really good. So generally, it tells you what you have to do. Um, okay. And so once you have Terraform init, it's going to create a .terraform folder. And then in there, it's going to provide references to it. And you'll all be good. <laughs> Remove bash history. Oh, I guess that's okay. where it would be stored. That makes sense. Plaid's right. Yeah. I thought he was saying, like, delete the bash RC file. But history, that makes sense. Um, so okay. once you do Terraform plan, your infrastructure matches configuration. Terraform has compared your real infrastructure. So... Um, it would only say that if the file wasn't saved. So just do uh, an ls hyphen la to see if the file is in the main tf, if it's in this folder here. I think it's in there, yeah. And the file is saved, right? Yeah. Yep. So try uh, Terraform plan one more time. Has compared your real infrastructure against your configuration and found no difference. So no changes are needed. Can you go check EC2 and make sure if uh, see if anything's running? I don't think anything is running. And just yeah. click on, um, or just type in EC2 in the top again. Yeah. There's a lot of clicks to do it. There's also can mm -hmm. cancel and exit, but yeah, I don't. I always just go the long way. Okay. And on the left hand side, I go to instances because there is an instance running. Oh, so yep. I was running so, that a bit earlier here. So I don't know if that is like conflicting with it. I don't think so. But if you can, just you can just tear that down. It's a totally different kind of instance. So just checkbox it, and we'll get an okay. instant state at the top there. It's the uh, uh, the buttons at the top right. Corner. There's buttons towards the top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. And Thank we'll you. just Stop uh, terminate instance. that. It's totally. I'll just terminate it. Okay. Say bye bye. All right. Going off. But I don't think that's conflicting it. with it. So we'll go back to uh, Git pods. Okay. Run Terraform plan again. Hmm. Okay. So just to do a sanity check, can you type in cat just where you are, cat and yeah. space or main.tf? 
Yeah. So we're just making sure that like this file's not empty. So there's yeah, a file the, here. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's the same file. I I have auto save uh, enabled. So okay, it's the be so, beauty of a live stream, though. Look, debugging. I would say yeah, yeah. like if this is not working, I would rule it out. Resource blocks is inside the provider block. Oh, is it? Yeah, I, it's you know it's just that large font. I can't see what's going on. <laughs> okay, I can shrink it a bit. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So if you scroll on up, yeah. So I don't think it is. If you scroll up, all the way up. That's all I got. No, it's fine. But but uh, um, uh, they're right. If the thing is, if it was to be embedded, like if you had that. Um, oh yeah, I see what they're saying. You have it in the provider script. Okay, so on line thirteen to line twenty, copy that out and yep. put it outside the provider because it's in the configuration uh, okay. one. I didn't even notice that you did that. So line okay. 13 as well. There we go. Yeah, so I didn't even know it was there. Okay, Three. so basically you're saying there was no changes because nothing was initialized. Well, we wrote it in we wrote it in a valid way, so yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, just uh, write Terraform plan. That brings up a, a question I have. Is there a way to validate the configuration? Uh, there is. I don't know if it... Can you just go backwards and, and put it back in an invalid state? Let's see if we can actually detect it. Yeah. There's two ones we can run. There's Terraform format. So type in Terraform FMT. So what this does is it is for um, it is for formatting. So like let's say like your curly braces are wrong or something. So it would just okay. it would automatically format it, or it could throw an error. Then type Terraform validate. And so okay. this will this should validate syntax as well. Well, yeah, that's what I thought, Vlad. I thought it would happen before. So the validator is supposed to say if it's invalid or not, and it didn't complain. So maybe that is just an edge case that Terraform doesn't have, and we'll go bug them about okay. it. But generally, it would complain, right? So when you run Terraform plan, it does a validate. So that's why I didn't even suggest to run it. Okay. Um, but uh, so what we'll do is go save that, and we'll run Terraform plan again. Yeah. Okay. And so if you scroll on up, you're, this is what it's generating out. This is called an execution plan. Um, and if you're using other providers, you know, this is where we talk about chain sets or stack sets. The idea is okay. it's kind of like documenting saying, this is what we plan to change. And here it's saying, I'm just going to create a bunch of stuff. So it's just creating the okay. AWS instance. Uh, so when you run Terraform plan, right now we're doing a speculative plan, meaning that we run Terraform plan and it says, we speculate this is what's going to change. Okay. okay? Um, but it didn't generate out a file, but we can actually specify an output for this file to be used as an execution plan to be executed, okay? But we'll come back okay. to that later. So what I want you to do is that now we have plan. Let's actually, we're happy with it. We, we looked at it over. It looks okay. Let's type in Terraform apply. Okay. And so what Terraform apply is going to do, it's going to run the same thing that Terraform plan did. It's going to uh, make a speculative uh, execution plan. It's going to say, do you want to perform these operations? Yay or nay? So type in yes. Okay. You have to, and... set, your language, you have to set your language as a horse if you wanted to say yay or nay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now this is, this is create, when it says it's creating, does that mean it's provisioning these instances on AWS now? Or is this just generating a file That's that right. we can use to provision. Nope, it's it well, it generated out the execution plan, like at, it doesn't actually show anywhere, and then it also uh, deployed it. So right now, if you go up to your EC2 console on the second tab yeah. there, and you were to uh, refresh, there's a, usually a refresh button on all pages. It's, okay. it's better to click the one that's in the console, otherwise it, you, you have to wait a thousand years, but in the top right corner, do you see the refresh button? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. So there it is, so, and it technically isn't done. So AWS, when you deploy an EC2 instance, it does initializing stage, and then it does two status checks. So technically, like this is a caveat of Terraform where it just decided to uh, say that it was done, but it's not truly done, and there's ways to work around okay. that with the Terraform language. Um, but anyway, what we'll do is we'll go back to our, um, our code, and what I want you to do is pull up the command or the, the command tree or the tree of our code. So I want to show you yeah. that something's been generated out. So pull up okay. the project tree. Sorry, I say command tree. Yeah. Project tree, project hierarchy. Yeah. And so notice that there's a terraform.tf state file. So yeah. this is saying 
what your infrastructure is, the state of your infrastructure. This is how it's managing state. Okay. So every time you deploy, it's changing this. And technically, there's versioning in here, but I don't exactly know how it works. Um, but this, if you lose this file, we'll, we will not know the state of it anymore, OK? okay. So, OK. So you generally don't want to delete these files. Um, but it also should make a backup. So if we make another one, it will make a terraform.tf state backup, which will be the previous state. Notice there's a okay. .terraform lock HCL. That's a lock file. So if you open yeah. that up, um, this uh, is it's just like when you it's just like any kind of lock file. You know, like a Ruby, there's a gem file, Ruby lock file. Yeah. Okay. So it's just saying like you're using these versions of modules and plugins and stuff like that. But there's okay, also gotcha. another type of uh, of lock file, uh, or sorry, there's another type of uh, file that locks, and it's and it's a, it's a state lock file. So when let's say Christina and you are working on the same project and you deploy mm -hmm. something, and then you don't know that she's deployed, and so you go ahead and deploy something, you'd run into okay. serious problems. And so the way Terraform gets around that is they'll create a a Terraform state lock file that says, "Oh, Christina is doing this right now. So until it is done." You know, mm -hmm. your stuff's not going to execute. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So, but it's hard to catch because you have to watch it as it's deploying. Okay. So, just kind of explaining what's going on here. Um, yeah. But let's go see if our instance has deployed. Okay. And Vlad is just saying in the chat note the instance aren't in there. That's why the other instance already in the AWS account would not conflict with the instance that y'all were trying to launch. Yeah. That's a good point. So, if you go back to the, and that, that was me just doing a sanity check because I was like, I was, you know, when you run into problems, you're like, what could it be? And you just do whatever, <laughs> like you tap your yeah, toes. Yeah. But uh, if you go yeah. back to, to the, um, uh, the, the state file there, just to kind of yeah. like make it an even more explicit point, open the state file there. Somewhere in here yeah. is the ARN. You probably could type ARN and it probably would show up. There it is. Okay. So, so the ARN, when in AWS, this is like your in, unique identifier for a resource. Every time you launch a, uh, an instance, it's going to generate an ARN. And that's how you globally okay. identify things. I'm sure all providers have something similar. And so that's why there wouldn't have been a conflict earlier. I'm glad you okay. went back and said ARN and how to see it because I totally thought you just like misspelled and put like note the ins the instance yeah, yeah. R. I, I, just there. Said, I just said <laughs> ARN. I, 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 thought, I ARN, thought he typed it yeah. wrong. In the, but. ARN, ARN stands for Amazon Resource Name. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and to be clear for the folks that are noobs, because like I've literally never done this. So the AMI ID is literally the image in the image ID and the ARN is the instance ID of that image, right? Yeah. Well, there technically yeah. is an instance ID. So see where it says I hyphen zero four D zero four one eight. That's the instance ID. And the, okay. the ARN is like it's like a it's a address. It's like so the there's the ID. Uh, okay. It's like you live at you know, uh, 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 house four, and then the rest is like your entire address within AWS. Okay, so, and if we can just break this down, so it's saying it's an EC2 instance, it's in the US East one region, and then this is our mm -hmm. like, our address. That's like where, that's where, the where ID. Are... So that's, it, yeah. every AWS account has an account ID, so that's the account ID. Instance okay. is the type of what we're deploying, the resource under EC2, and then that the instance ID, it varies, but that's generally that format for AWS. Um, not that okay. I'm trying to teach AWS here, but that's just what it is. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, cool. So let's go see and if our EC2 instance is finished deploying. Just going to refresh to check. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. running. Cool. All okay. right. So now we deployed that, but we didn't really do anything with it important. So maybe something that would be interesting would be to try to deploy a um, like an Apache server. That's what I like to do a lot. So okay. what we would need to do is um, add a provisioner. And so okay. we want to have a remote provisioner. So what I want you to do is go into the internet and type in Terraform provisioners. And we'll kind of tie this back to like Ansible, what we're, what we're talking about, like where would you mm -hmm. do that Ansible stuff, right? Okay. And so if you click into there, we have... Um, on the left-hand side, if you just scroll on down, we're going to focus on that left-hand side menu because it makes it a bit clearer. Um, yeah. And so there are, there used to be vendor provisioners. We don't use those anymore. But see where it says generic provisioners? We have file, local exec, yeah. remote exec. OK, so yeah. mostly everything's focused around local and remote. So the idea is a provisioner allows you to run arbitrary scripts either locally 
remote. And locally means like the computer that is running Terraform right now or mm -hmm. remote, meaning running it on the actual machine that we provisioned, right? Yeah. And is that going through SSH when you do the remote exec? Uh, yes, it actually can. So if you click into remo okay. remote exec, okay. if you just saw, uh, yep, just click into remote exec there and you scroll on down a little bit here, what you'll see is a block in here for provisioners. Uh, you're going too yeah. far. Oh, sorry. Sure. Let's go uh, to the top there. Yeah. And so it's very simple. It just says provisioner, remote exec, and then you see where it has inline. So you can either provide it a script or okay. you can just put inline. So what we'll do is copy that provisioner block. Okay. And that's going to go in our resource uh, in here. Uh, yep. In terms, in terms of where you put it, it, like I'm sure the order doesn't matter, but is there a convention no, or doesn't. like tags at the bottom always? Or I don't know. Uh, you, Anton okay. would know. He wrote. He wrote. There's a website <laughs> like say Terraform best practices, and it outlines like thou shall always put. You know. <laughs> okay. But uh, I'm, you know, I don't follow it. Uh, in case, okay. like I, I, like I'm not saying I would not. I would just say that I, I haven't had the time to read up on it and and do it because, like Anton has written so many modules, he would he would have a good sense of what to do, have a good sense of what. what repeat. Oh, what happened? Well, that no, was I mean, weird. Hi, like, Nick. <laughs> yeah, uh, did, that was weird. Did we go off? What happened? Oh, sorry. Because there. you left. Yeah, no, I don't know what happened there. Uh, pop out. And we're back. I have no idea what is going on. Yeah, no, we're back. But my video. Okay. So I was just uh, saying, uh, we had a question here um, uh, from a fellow here. And uh, he was just saying, like, should we create a new file of NTF? Not necessarily because, you know, we're not, like, we would create a new, like, if we, let's say we wanted to use this with our Git repository, we would commit yeah. this, right? And we probably should be using repositories. Just don't feel like setting it up. But uh, we yeah. would commit. And then when we add a provisioner, then we would make that as a new commit, right? So you wouldn't necessarily yeah. make a new file, you just make a, a new thing there. Um, okay. That's how we would do it. So we have a remote exec in here, and we want to do something meaningful. So let's go just touch a new file. <laughs> okay. So All right. uh, I would probably CD into the main, like the, 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 like the, because I don't know where this is going to, it's probably going to put it in the home directory. So just like touch a new file there. Uh, and, yeah. and when I say touch, I don't mean in Git pods. I actually mean literally in the, in the provisioner. Oh, okay. Gotcha. An actual script. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what are we? Uh, what's the file we're gonna touch? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just like anything we want. So we can just say like uh, hello dot t. After the streaming okay. is done, will it be available uh, in Twitch? Uh, I, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yep. it's on Twitch for two weeks, and then we upload them. We also upload them to YouTube. Uh, if you look on the banner on the stream there, it's YouTube.com/slash the Practical Dev Team. All the all the walkthrough Wednesdays go up there. So we'll take out line twenty-two because we don't need it right now. We'll take out that comma because that might result in an error. Yeah. And so this is all I want to check for. Now there's another thing that we're going to need to do because I want to be able to go into the server and actually validate that, that oops, that file is there. Yeah. And so in order to do that, we're going to actually have to have some, um, we're going to have to provide an EC2 key. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I mean, that's one way or we can use sessions manager. Session manager is probably actually, you know, we'll use sessions manager. I think I'd prefer to do it that way. So what I okay. want you to do is, we could do that because we actually have to have a role set initially so that might not work so no i'm going to go back to my original thing and we're going to add ec2 keys to this so okay. um, in a new tab just type in something like ec2 deploy like ec2 key pairs terraform yeah and again like this is how it doesn't matter what provider if we went over digital ocean i'd be doing the same thing just always google terraform whatever terraform and so okay. we'll click into that one there yep and they always have a good example, right? And so if we scroll on down. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is our our resource there. So just grab that. And we'll yeah. flip on back. And you can 
this is a, a resource, so it's going to be at the same level as our web resource, our EC2 resource there. Yeah, okay. So that's there. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Great. And so the idea is we're going to have to generate a new public key. So um, we'll have to make it. Yeah, I can delete that out. I don't feel it's a big deal if you leak the key because this Git pods environment is uh, going to be gone at the end of the stream. But let's yep. go generate our new one. It's SSH hyphen keygen. I have, I have it like memorized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, space hyphen T. Oh, so you don't even have to do RSA? Cool. Yeah, that's even better. No, you yeah. got it right. I didn't yeah, yeah. realize you could just write that. That's great. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Vlad, yeah. though. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I can I can stop my screen for a second. Just copy it if you want. Or... Hi, Vlad. All right, well, yeah, we everyone's can delete it see, Everyone's going to see it anyway, right? So it's not, it this doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. yeah, this is, this is temporary. It doesn't matter. Thanks for showing up, Vlad. Yeah. Like, Vlad yeah. knows a lot about Terraform. That's why it was great for him to join. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Yeah, thanks for popping by, Vlad. OK, cool. So that got generated. Yeah, so just paste that. Um, or I guess you can cat out the file. So just type cat. Yeah. And um, it's probably it's made exactly where we are. Oh, or did it go to the home directory? I don't know. I think it doesn't so. Matter. Just you want the, you want the public key, right? Cool. Let me just. Uh, I just realized you two like coordinated and have the same shirt, and I'm feeling a little left out because I do not have <laughs> my dev shirt on. <laughs> well, I didn't coordinate with the messy beds because I don't have a bed in my office, so I feel pretty left out too. So, uh, okay. So I'm gonna paste that public key in, and then I needed to specify an email after. That's what it looked like in the example, or is that uh, not necessary? No, I think it's just whatever's there. No, no. Okay. I, I think it's just like, because like that's the address and sometimes it's an email, sometimes it's whatever. So we yeah. have the deployer key. And so we need to uh, associate that to the EC2 instance. So go back up to your um, AWS key pair there. It's on the last tab there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. In your browser there. And scroll on down because I feel like there's probably like an example on how to like integrate it with EC2. Just keep on scrolling on down. Keep on um, scrolling. Okay, they so, have it. Yeah, we can't do it. yeah, that's not how we want to do it. Uh, go over to um, just go back to AWS instance, like the documentation for that under uh, Terraform. So just type in Terraform. Yeah, you got it there. Yeah. And if you go to argument references, there'll probably something be there for key pair, I bet. Okay. Uh, keep, yeah, just keep going down here. Do, 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 CPU, CPU. There's credit specification. Password data. AWS key pair, no. Key pair, uh, yeah. yeah. So see, hold on, going too fast. Um, so it says the key name of the key pair to use. So yeah, we'll flip back to our code. I think I know what it is. So we'll flip back to our code. Yeah. And um, what we can do, see where it says the name deployer? Because we can always reference yeah. things. We don't have to copy the name there. So what we'll do is scroll down to our, or up to our EC2 instance. Yeah. And uh, we on it, we're going to provide a new attribute called key name. We'll do that on line 18 there, or around there, wherever okay. we want. Key underscore name. And then we can just okay. reference it. Yeah, it's underscore there. And uh, then we'll just do equals, and we'll type the word deployer. Oh, no, you don't even have to do that. You can just reference it, right? OK. So take out the double quotations. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. It, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it'll yeah. know the, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And okay. employer dot, but you have to do dot key underscore name. Okay. And, and so we'll do a Terraform plan. Yeah. Oh, it's cause I switched out of the directory. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. In my so, uh, in, in the Terraform course, I do that like a thousand times. I'm always in the wrong. <laughs> okay, so reference times. to undeclared resource. So let's validate that that's the actual name. I think it was deployer dash key. So if I just oh, oh no, it you, says it could be sorry. It's because you have to type in AWS key pair dot deployer dot key name. I forgot. Yeah. Oh okay. Okay, and that yeah. was a question I had about the these these double quoted 
pairs here. So that's that's just uh, another way in this config to do a dot. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So if, I, if, we, if we have to type AWS in front of it, I wouldn't be surprised too. I just can't remember. Okay. Trial and error. Seems that's to be like doing... that hard to figure out, eh? Yeah. Okay. So it seems to be doing something that looks constructive. Okay. So it, it gave us the plan again, and then we can see it's got an AWS key pair deployer that will be created. So scroll okay. to the top because it always has a summary of like, it has like a little, like a, like a little key that says what it will do, like a, a legend. Um, okay. All, okay. So notice it's saying replace. So look, do you see where it says like plus and it says create and it says minus and plus destroy and create replacement? Yeah. So some resources can be modified in place. Some have to be destroyed and created. So like with EC2, it okay. decided that the only way it's going to be able to do it is it has to completely replace it. Okay, gotcha. So our, just to be clear, I'm, I know I'm saying obvious stuff probably, but when we redeploy this, YOLO is going to get terminated and then a new instance of it will be recreated with our new mm -hmm. uh, remote exec that will run to generate the hello.txt file. Correct. So the thing is, okay. is that the reason why you might not want something to destroy and create would be like a database. So imagine, yeah. you, oh, Anton showed up. Anton's here. We oh, were talking we about you. Anton. We got to use Anton <laughs> modules now. We got to use Anton modules. <laughs> we're not even there yet, Anton. We've just been using the provider, eh? He's here for 20 minutes. Anyone ask, ask him any questions? Anton, He's what, like... is your, what is your favorite, uh, favorite uh, fruit or vegetable? Yeah. He, he's like, I'm leaving this stream. They're not using modules. <laughs> okay. So, so we're, we're singing your praise earlier. You can watch the, the video and see where, see where we uh, make good mention of you. Uh, so, yeah. you know, if you're using a database, right. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, you might not want that replaced, right. Cause that okay. could interrupt your service. Yeah. Like it depends on how it's set up. Maybe you have redundant databases. It's not a big deal. So that would be a case where you might put in a, a lifecycle event saying, don't ever destroy this thing ever, okay. right? But this is an easy yeah. to do instance. It's, a, it's compute, we don't care. So I think it's all good. And notice there's like curlies, like that says it would, it would um, change it. But notice there it says key name, deployer name, forces replacement. That's why it has yeah. to recreate it. So we'll go all the way down the bottom and we're gonna type in yes. To, and, to, uh, and Anton has, but yeah, we're mentioning. I was mentioning earlier that there's Terraform best practices, and uh, you know, because people are asking, you know, is there a particular way you should write things, and that's uh, that's what people should look at. All right, so I'm running Terraform apply again, and mm -hmm. I will say yes once it. Yeah. Yes. If you don't want to write yes every time, you can do, you can use the auto approve flag. So it's like hyphen okay. auto hyphen approve, but you should generally that's... say yes. Yeah. I, I'm guessing in DevOps land, you don't want to go YOLO mode. So. Right. Well, once you get comfortable, then you start doing it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, there. Uh, you know, so, just destroying compute. That's what I do. Had my coffee, destroyed some so, compute. Well, the thing is, like, you can write um, tests. So there's uh, Sent Sentinel, which is part of Terraform Cloud, which allows you to do statistical analysis of saying, like, hey, I expect there to be these things. And then you can use Terra, Terra Test which is okay. a testing framework that allows you to like do integration end to end testing. So it'll actually set up a, um, another actual environment temporarily before you do that. And so that would be a bit safe. You'd want to do auto approve. Um, okay. but anyway, so the instance is deploying, but I already feel that, I don't know if that those commands are going to execute because, um, we didn't specify the remote for the, like the actual SSH key, but, um, if it doesn't work, that's fine, but let's go back okay. and see if it's actually working. Is it deploying? Is it working? Uh, it terminated oh, the old your... one. Did you clear your screen? Is that why we don't? Oh, it. Uh... Oh, you ran approve, right? Where is it? Yeah, I ran okay. Terraform apply and I approved it. I can do it again, but since it is item potent, uh... but, but oh, mind it... you, it will do a destructive value, a destructive action again though, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's fine. Just write yes. But I just don't see the server there, eh? So I'm just w wondering what's going on. Yeah. Oh, okay. there was an error. So invalid key, duplicate uh, key pair. So that's one thing. And I don't know the way around. Maybe Anton knows. Maybe this is like an edge case. I don't know what happens when you have a, a key pair because that, that seems like it's trying to create another one, right? So mm -hmm. I think there was a failure. Okay. I think something actually did fail because usually what happens when you do Terraform apply, it will run yeah. and then it will stop. And I uh, there was no way you could have done that that quick, right? Eh? Can you yeah. do a refresh? I saw, I, I saw it. 
I saw it shutting down the YOLO server instance, mm -hmm. and then it's terminated now, but I'll refresh. Yeah, it's still if we terminated. Were, if we were using Terraform Cloud, we would have a history of this, and that's one advantage of using Terraform Cloud. Like It's like every single last okay. one you had there, where it's like, I don't know what you did, right? Um, so gotcha. that's one thing there. But uh, this is kind of a weird edge case, and I don't know a way around this, Anton. If you know, that'd be great. But we'll have to go delete that. EC2 key pairs are regional AWS resources, so you need to come up with a new name to make it created under a name. So that is an edge case there. So what I want you to do is go up to the instances EC2 key management at the top. Yeah. Okay. And we're just going to delete out the delete out the key manually, right? Uh, Welcome to the stream, Carmen. Okay. And so on the left hand yeah. side, you're going to scroll down and look for key pairs. Okay. You generally do not ever want to delete your infrastructure, by the way. You shouldn't be doing click ops, but I know mm -hmm. what we're doing, so it's okay. <laughs> click ops, I like that term. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, dude, I call I it Yolo, like, YOLO ops. I thought that was like <laughs> people throwing shade at people, being like click ops, like being derogatory, but apparently it's a, a very old term. It, it, mm -hmm. it was, okay. Like when this stuff started coming out first, it came about that way, but delete your deployer key just so that we're not dealing with that there. Yeah. Uh, where's the delete actions? Okay, delete. Yeah, and as Anton said, you could just rename it. But um, yeah, but uh, we're, so we're, could... we're okay mm -hmm. there. You, oh, I have to type I, delete. You yeah. gotta type the word delete. Yeah, I know they change it every two seconds. Okay, so just uh, I I know we've been talking through it fast, but we tried to run Terraform apply again. The key was already stored on AWS, so it gave that error about a duplicate key. So we're we're doing click ops. We're, we deleted the key. Now we're going to rerun Terraform apply. Yeah. And we shouldn't get that error because it will generate the key again on AWS. Mm -hmm. So, okay. but, but you know, generally, generally this won't happen to you. But again, there's always some little edge cases or some mm -hmm. things you have to work in. Like we said, like with the key here or the fact that there's those two status checks, but all of it can be solved, right? It's just, um, yeah, you know, Terraform works for everything. So it's, it's, you know, if there's a little bit of work we have to do it's, uh, uh, to get uh, work across all providers, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention, just to point it out, that we are, like, hitting that hour and a half mark. Uh, Andrew, if you have other things you need to do, or Nick, any other stuff, uh, I just want to keep everyone aware of the time. I can do a 10-hour <laughs> yeah. stream if you want. <laughs> uh, I, I have time. Uh I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, but it's at uh, 3.30. So, it, uh, sorry, it's like in okay. about it, just over an hour. So I can still go for for a little while here. So, um, okay. So I think like you alluded to, Andrew, so the remote exec didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, because so... we're missing configuration for it. And I think it's because we didn't specify like the SSH keys because how would it know, right? Um, yeah. So, so I'm going to, I'm just going to delete the deployer key sure. again because we're going to run Terraform apply again. We could also, I mean, it probably wouldn't be a good idea, but we could probably also use a Terraform function like to randomize it every time. But, mm -hmm. uh, okay. you know, that probably wouldn't be a good idea. So um, what yeah. we'll do is go up to um, the documentation for Terraform Provisioner. Yeah. And uh, on the left-hand side, or actually just scroll on down because it should say like, um, like SSH or something in here. It's somewhere in here. Let's keep on scrolling yeah. on down. SSH found it. Or even once. type in SSH There's... on the screen there. Yeah. Okay, it's only it at says, the top. The remote exec provisioner supports both SSH. Is that is that hyperlink the SSH there that you're on? No, it's just uh, it's got some nice okay. styling, but it's just oh. kind of highlighted. So on the left hand side, it should show up there as well. So you know we saw like file, local exec, remote. Yeah, it's, there it usually, is. Usually, like it would follow it right after it would say SSH. Yeah, so it only seems to be at the start. That's fine. So I would just um, maybe expand data source, click on data sources. No, it wouldn't be under data sources. Um, Rick, where did they put it? Oh, by the way, yeah, Anton has a weekly, um, a weekly Terraform uh, newsletter called weekly.tf. Okay. And he's always releasing really good stuff on there. So. That's something people Absolutely. might want to check out there. Um, you know, if you can't find folks. it this way, let's just use Google and find it. Type in like remote, exec, yeah. SSH. I think it's actually called connection. That's what it's called. It's called, instead of doing that, type in Terraform. Oh, there it is. First one. You got it. Yeah, okay. So I guess it's just somewhere else where it was. I don't know why it wasn't. I gave, I gave Terraform a, a lot of heck about their documentation. 
Okay, so is it in here? here? Copies. That's what you want. Uh, yeah. So just copy that connection block there. Yeah. Oh, um, just the block. It's Sorry. Not a, yeah, it's not exactly what we want, but it's uh, pretty close. So we'll just go there and, and paste that block on in. And we'll put that in here, right? Yep. Okay. And uh, we'll obviously, we, we don't have variables for this, so we just need to copy it. I don't know if you need that comma on the end of line 23. Oh, I don't yeah. think you need that comma there. Okay. If, I mean, if it, we do, we'll know the error. So we're not doing password. We're doing um, SSH. So we'll have to go back yeah. and look up some of the settings here. I don't know what it's called. So you'll have to take a look there. Uh, where was it? Uh, key pair. OK. Uh, no, sorry, here. Provisioner oh, it's connect. under, yeah, connection there. So if you scroll on down, we should get like better documentation here. It'll ha probably have all the arguments. So we okay. got host, uh, or Private key. Private key. Uh. That's what it is, private key. Okay. So I'm kind of curious why they're just... specifying, why are they specifying private key and not public key? Uh, because that's what you, because the public key is on the, the machine and then your local host is going to use it against it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, All so right. the contents of the SSK key used for the creation, um, these can be loaded from a file on disk using the file function. That's what we'll have to do. So, okay. click on, um, click on file. Yeah. And honestly, I don't even want to figure this out. Can you? Uh, it's in my documentation. If you go back <laughs> to the, uh, there's no way we're doing this by hand. I actually wrote a, um, I wrote a, uh, I wrote a module. Uh, okay. Anton, I actually made a module, by the way. Uh, and it's it's if you see where it says exam pro code at the top, you just click that at the top there. There's another yeah. repository. Okay. Not for Terraform. Uh, Anton's we're awesome right module. We're just, we're just doing. Well, we haven't even used one yet, so. Yeah. That's how slow we're going here, Anton. See where the, uh, it says repositories down below. If you just type in like Terraform. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, it's right there. It's Terraform AWS Apache example. All right. And cool, so cool. Uh, in the code here, if you just go into um, the main file. Okay. Uh, Anton, if you want to like feature my Terraform AWS example module in your newsletter, I wouldn't mind it. It, <laughs> it does basically nothing, but you know. Yeah, but it would be in the newsletter though. Be filler, yeah. All right. <laughs> so yeah, we have our key pair there, right? And yeah, actually, that's... that's something we should have done is passed it through the, the public thing in there. That, but that's not the one we're looking for. Um, so just yeah. keep on keep on scrolling. Do we use the remote provisioner here? Yeah. Isn't it file? I don't see it in here. It's somewhere in my darn well, course. Well, there's <laughs> the file function, but yeah. okay. But it's the wrong thing. So let's go back to, uh, let's go back to Gitpod because it's definitely in there. We have all the code over there. Yeah, and I actually have a folder under there called remote exec. Like it's a okay. project if you open up the project directory. Okay. Main so, TF and remote exec. Well, it's um yeah, it's in there. Main TF. Yeah, yeah, just open that one up there. And if we scroll on down, uh let's keep on going down to the ground. Keep on scrolling. All right, okay. So see there like the private key on line eighty seven. Yeah. Yeah. 88. So just grab that. Yeah. And then instead of that, we'll just grab the IDRSA, right? Yeah, like wherever it is on your on your uh, uh, computer there, right? Yeah, it's so it down in there. Be... So yours isn't in root. It's probably tilde forward slash. Yeah. Terraform validate command won't give any clue on where the problem is. Yeah. I mean, we know that okay. now. Okay, so this is Airport, just the... Uh, open source, so if you don't like something, you can always open a ticket and complain. <laughs> well, you, well it's open source. Before, you, shouldn't you shouldn't complain. You should you should leave a thoughtful and question. I'm notoriously bad for like complaining about form. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I responded I'm, to all your I'm, complaints, I'm not, Andrew. I'm not nice at all. I don't even like... There's like a structure I go and I just delete the whole thing out and then I just go... <laughs> I want it like this, please. <laughs> and I always put like a sorry in there just in case. 
Um, so uh, is your Canadian? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, okay, so we got the file. They made me the OSS manager specifically because they were tired of dealing with you. It, no, just kidding. They, that yeah, like, there's, there's this Probably. Andrew guy that keeps answering. Christina's worked with him. We'll hire her. She can deal with it. <laughs> Uh, so, so that's going to load that file there, and um, I think that's all we need. Unless Anton okay. points something else that we need, but I think that's it. Um, so we'll go ahead and we will uh, provision form apply again. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, missing and, requirement. Uh, connection. Oh, you need the host. You need the host. Oh, yeah. Um. I don't. I don't know what it is. Just go check the other file there. It'll tell us what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Oops. There yeah. Go. Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. Link to twenty. It's it's wherever the local file is. So if it's in the root, like, I don't know if it's in the root. Like that's what it was on my um my uh my machine. But um, is it in the root host here? Or... Those the IP. Sorry, Which what the private key? Oh, oh, sorry. The host is. Oh, the public IP address. Yeah, so just grab that line there. Yeah. Um, yeah, the entire line there. Self means it will like reference the existing EC2 instance. Okay. And we'll just put that in ours. Yeah. Okay. And, I'll and we'll Terraform do ourselves apply. a Terraform apply. If you ever want to do, you can always try that auto approve as well. Okay. Yeah. How do you set that again? Uh, you just do like hyphen auto hyphen approve. Okay, so, gotcha. Nick, are you convinced of IC yet or no? Well, I haven't done a lot of this, but I mean, like, uh, I, I like that it's it's validated and stuff. I mean, I, I mean, I'm definitely, you know, it it's got like C like tent syntax, you know, like it it does seem. I haven't worked with YAML a ton, but uh, you know, I don't I don't have a strong opinion yet, but I, I feel like just from what I've heard, infrastructure as code is the way to go. But that's what I'm basing it on. <laughs> There's a there's some open source tools out there. So like there's Terraform Validate, but there's also some open source ones like TF Lint, TF. Which by the way, I, Anton, I didn't get time to cover my course. I wish I put those in there. Um, so there are other ones out there. Another thing we didn't do when we were in the VS Code is we didn't install the Terraform language um, uh, 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 extension, which like is nice if you want some auto completion there. Okay. If you wanted to do that while we're waiting, it takes two seconds. Yeah. Go to the, uh, the extensions there. Yeah. Yeah. Sec here. Ba, ba, ba. There's a lot of great things in the ecosystem. I always just forget about them. <laughs> um, uh, and just, we will. I don't know which one is, like, one? is an official one. Yeah, it has more. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the one that's twenty one thousand versus. <laughs> unless unless Anton made the other one, then we should use that one. Yeah. <laughs> Team Anton. All right. Okay. Cool. So that's installed. Don't need to reload. That's good. Ha okay. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So that gives us IntelliSense in here now. So like in terms of if I come here. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. No, that's definitely handy. Uh, I'll see if I can drop that. Like yeah, here we go. Anybody who wants to get on the Terraform train in VS Code, here is the link. Okay. So let's just close this. Okay, fail to parse SSH private key. The this private key is passphrase detected. Oh, that's right. I did put a password. Uh, oh. I can well, regenerate it. Key, I guess. Uh, and if if folks were wondering, uh, it what the password was YOLO. Um, okay. <laughs> these lights All are right. just like I'm melting under these lights. Oh no! Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm in my basement and I'm uh, I'm melting. Uh, okay, I mean it's raining here, so all the clouds are coming into my office. So I'm actually cold. But <laughs> yeah, it's not snowing here yet, but it's uh, soon. Uh, okay, I just got to delete the keys. Let's get rid of the deployer key. Am I going to be an AWS expert by, uh, after the end of this stream? Oh, right. do you hear that? Anton, Anton's uh, module is better. Oh, is that the one okay. we linked the four ops? Okay. All right. So I've regenerated the uh, private key, no password. I've deleted the deployer key on AWS. So if we run Terraform apply again, we should. Oh, and I forgot to do the auto. 
I don't know. No YOLO for me. Okay. Let's type yes. Just close the extensions there. All right. So we're destroying again. So if I come back to the instances, you can see <laughs> another one's being shut down and lots of YOLO going on there. If we're successful here, we'll we'll take a look at a module. We'll talk about how uh, how it'd be really cool if we had a module for uh, forum. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Still destroying. Okay. It's terminated. So at this point, it should try to do creation. Creating. Awesome. So if we come back here, we should see creating, pending. OK, that's good. Refresh again. Running. OK, so reprovisioned it. And it still says it's still creating. OK, ran the remote exec. So in theory, we should have a hello.txt file in our instance. Well, we're going to have to get access to the instance. Yeah. We're going to have to modify our, uh, like, we're going to have to do some click ops and uh, uh, do something we shouldn't be doing to make it work. Or actually, uh, no, we have our SSH off. key. We can do, oh, sorry. No, we can just SSH in, right? I forgot. Yeah. That's why we did the whole, that's why we did the whole key here. So. Okay. Uh, Terraform's still running. I know it looks like it's created, but it's, it's not done yet. Okay. Hmm. And in terms of getting SSHing into it, uh, the public IP, I can just grab that from uh, the AWS console, or is there uh, another way I can pull it? That's a good question. Uh, we have a Terraform outputs command that we can use. So we just run Terraform outputs. I don't know if we wrote an outputs. If we didn't, we'll we'll add it. We'll do it that way, because that's probably a better way to do it. And we'll learn about the Terraform uh, refresh command, um, which is okay. a good command to know. Yeah, we didn't output it. I saw a message at the end that said if you you add dash dash output, I think. Uh, no, it's just Terraform outputs, but we'll, we'll get to there in a moment. Okay. It, yeah, it might have told us something. I'm not sure. Okay. So actually, while it's right. going, let's go take a look. Let's flip over to it because this is taking some time here. Uh, go over to your code, and we'll see if we actually yeah. have an outputs. Go all the way to the bottom. Usually, I, I write oh. outputs at the bottom there, and just okay. uh, write outputs um, curly braces. Yeah, and it probably takes a name. So name equals um. Oh, you'll it type seems... name there. Okay, it, I'm it, just it, looking at the autocomplete. Yeah, yeah maybe it's because like it's not supposed to be outputs. It's output. I'm not sure if you can go to the other tab there at the top and just see what the outputs is called there. Yeah, probably could even copy uh... the code there if we go all the way to the bottom. Oh, it's output. There it is. Yeah, so just copy that. Okay. And... Five days ago. <laughs> oh, it seems like five longer than ago. that. What did um, I have for so, breakfast five days so, ago? Right. So we're referencing AWS, my server, public. I think I had pancakes. <laughs> Finished pancakes. <laughs> I, I, what I learned is that uh, in Quebec, Montreal's yeah. in on. Is, is Montreal's in Quebec, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's you know it's Ottawa. That's the one that always messes me up. Um. But uh, yeah, what I learned is like in Quebec they like to use a bit more egg in their pancakes. Mm. So yeah, yeah. I usually put in food. more eggs, but it depends if you're making like fluffy pancakes, more egg maybe. If you're doing like crepe crepes, crepe. uh, they're they're like super skinny. So I don't know. We can uh, well we'll we'll talk about it on the on the next pancake stream if you're available. Can we do a pancake stream? That'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And talk yeah. about arepas. That's we'll what come, they got we'll here. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about re real maple syrup versus corn syrup. Like, uh, anyways. Uh, okay, so it's still creating. At, and I have a question since this is still going on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What's the reason the creation time takes so long? Is it just because there's so much in, oh, potato pancakes, nice. Oh, it's, also, because uh, it's, doing, it's doing remote exec. So the thing is, is that it's trying to uh, connect via the SSH key and it could be failing, right? I actually just, I okay. didn't even think about that, eh? Because usually we shouldn't take three minutes. Um, that or the server's not ready. So you know how it's doing like initializing and then it does the two checks. It could be waiting for that okay. and then it will do it. So if you go back here and refresh, the two checks have passed. Yeah. So it should be working. Uh, if we go back okay. to our, our uh, Terraform here. So if it's not working, it's because the key's not working. It's just infinitely trying. So it'll probably time out after a while. So I, what I would do is I would stop it because it's not going to complete. Okay. It's, so just uh, trying, click right? opposite. 
Uh, well, I would just say kill the com uh, kill the uh, uh, terraform from trying to do it. And what we'll do okay. is we'll just manually we'll just manually try to log in and see because like either if we can SSH in with the same key, we'll know if it works yeah. or not, right? So yeah, exactly. yeah, just do an SSH. Yeah, and we'll debug from there. So um was it SSH? Let's see. Uh, uh, I that IP address. We'll have to yeah, go manually that's... grab it from these two. Okay, so if I just or, or actually click instead on the of doing that, idea. you know oh sorry, instead of here. doing that, yeah, there's another thing we can do. We can use the Terraform refresh command. So if you go okay. back to um, here, and if you type in Terraform, not refresh, because that, that's old now, apparently. So Terraform okay. apply space hyphen on, uh, only hyphen refresh. And so what this will do is it says, don't, uh, you might need double dash, flag. Dash. I, I yeah. never remember. It could be two, yeah. Um, flag provided, but not defined. Let me look Do you have up. to give it a value like true or? Uh, is okay. that or renaming oh. the flag wrong? Oh, it's refresh only. <laughs> That's ah, okay. the other way. So I don't oh, know yeah. if it's single oh, okay. or double. There we go. That yeah, looks I'm, more promising. Now that uh, Christina's talking about that, I'm wondering what I want to eat, uh, eat some my pancakes from. So <laughs> okay, so it's we need a pancake screen. People are interested. <laughs> is, that, is that made from yeah, like yeah. rice? Rice, uh, rice flour or? Corn flour. Corn flour. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to go back to Carmen's potato pancakes. Lack is um, good too, actually. And so also, I I don't know if our server's name, my server, might be called Web. Yeah, I think it's a it's a copy pasta error. I think it's a yeah. Web, isn't it? Yeah. So back we'll up. just name that uh, Web there. Yeah. All right. Uh, We're doing some live live copy pasta. All right. Yep. So I'm gonna run Terraform apply. There's gonna be a change, right? Oh, sorry. So, uh, uh, before you do that, do uh, refresh a hyphen refresh hyphen only, because what that will okay, do, yeah. I still t yeah type of uh, refresh uh, refresh only yeah. So what that's going to do is it's going to say don't deploy or create anything. Just see if there's a configuration change. It's going to say oh you added an output, so we'll just change that. And that's kind of like a very light way of 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 okay. changing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's saying the AWS key pair deployer has been changed. Because if and... we try to deploy, it would just say something, nothing has changed, and it wouldn't change anything, or I don't know. So all it's going to do is update our Terraform state file to have the public IP address. So just type in yes. Okay. Right? And so now we have that public IP address. If you type in Terraform output, I think it's just Terraform output, and then hit, uh, hit enter. So there it is, okay. right? So now... Uh, what you can do is you can type in SSH, yeah, and um, EC2 oh. hyphen user. Yeah. The the user for AWS is always EC2 hyphen user for the Amazon Linux two instances, and then do uh, was it dollar sign parentheses for it actually or sorry at, at sign oh uh, at sign first after the user. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. And I then, see the user logging into the host. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so yeah. um, well, instead of pasting the IP address, we're going to use bash scripting here. So we'll do, because then we get to show you a com uh, like a command of, um, or a flag of EC2. So you dollar sign curlies after the at sign? Yeah. Yeah, we got to put it in quotes, though. Uh, yeah, probably. Because you're, yeah, you're right. You're going to execute a command, right? Yeah, I, sometimes it works without it, but it's always safe to do it. So best practice is always do doubles. Uh, and so the Terraform space output, um, space uh, public IP, so we only get that, and then uh, give it a flag of raw so that it escapes it in double quotations, or or doesn't just escape in double quotations, I think. And I think it's just a single, okay. a single, um, uh, I don't know if it has two, I think it's just one. It might work with both, I'm not sure. I think um, whenever I, you have a, I think for uh, arguments, uh, when you have flags, if it's a like a word, you uh, always have like double. a single letter, right? Yeah, if it was yeah, if it was dash right. r for raw, you would do just dash r. But... So okay, bad substitution. Let's... It might be parentheses instead of curlies. I I don't think Let's you're see. wrong. I think it's just. I think bad it's because it's, it's probably parentheses instead of curlies. I can't remember which one it is. Oh yeah, you're right. It is parentheses. Yeah. Sorry, I'm mixing up uh, JavaScript so, templates. So strings. many languages, right? Like I I can't yeah, get yeah. straight half the time. Yeah, I guess echo would be like the sanity check. 
Okay, unexpected um, argument. There's there's still a curly brace in there. Uh, son of a... <laughs> Shut the front door. All right, okay. Okay, so it worked, but it didn't output the public IP. Do I have to do... Um, it's definitely public IP. Let me just double check. It's... Do I have to do... No, it's public IP. Uh, you know what? If we want to know how to do it, there's doc like the documentation has it. So if you just type in like a uh, Terraform output raw, uh, we'll get that from yeah. the documentation. Uh, Chip Wheel said, if you're using Paran, stitch the quotes. Oh, you're right, Andrew. It looks like it's dash raw, not. So I was completely isn't that, wrong. Isn't and that sorry, what, what was? Yeah. Uh, sorry, what was Chip saying? Uh, if you use parens, ditch the quotes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to test Thanks, the Carmen, echo bye. first. That it? Okay, it's still uh, outputting nothing. Yeah, Carmen. Okay, you know what? Oh, well, let's let's just... go back to the documentation there because it, it'll tell us definitively what we're doing wrong. Because uh, yeah, they have an example, example down below. Okay, uh, Terraform so output. Have, okay, and if it's there? raw, yeah, hold on a sec. Dash raw, raw. Okay, oh, you put raw first, maybe. It shouldn't matter, I don't think, but we can try that. Okay. Terraform raw, okay. Let's go back here. Hack in the matrix. All right, Terraform raw, public IP. I guess it does matter. The order. Oh, it made of a it, difference. So. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, so that's uh, interesting that it would, but so I'm gonna put it. Yeah, that's that's well. Hey, we got it working right. Uh, so um, then I, uh, then it's gonna be SSH followed by that, and then after that we do have to do hyphen I and give the path to the uh, private key, I guess. Yeah. Or the public user. Private key, yeah. Uh, EC2 hyphen user. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Then. And then uh, uh, curly, yeah, cur uh, a dollar sign curly. Or dollar sign, okay. dollar sign parentheses. Yeah, you got it. Space <laughs> hyphen I. All right. It's hanging. Oh, uh, do, uh, I only know this because I've been deploying my stuff to DigitalOcean. Do I have to update the firewall to allow my IP address to access? Uh, um, mm. Because I know, like, uh, yeah, you do. Okay. So, wow, actually... um, yeah. Okay. So the thing is, well, when you launch an EC2 instance, I'm, I think it has SSH 20. Like, go check what it is. By default, AWS will have it. But the thing is, when Terraform does it, I think it clears out all of the security group uh, things, and that's why it doesn't show up. So, okay, so the I have code, to go you where? Need it. Yeah, you're going to, yeah, if you just look at the EC2 instance and you click on it, yeah. um, if it's launched, if there's one even running, uh, you can go to security groups. There's a tab there if you go up. Uh, where's security group? Uh, okay. It's in the bottom uh, bottom panes if you scroll up there. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. All right, security okay. group. Okay. And then there's inbound rules. Yeah. Thanks for joining okay. us, Anton. So there's no right. inbound rules, so that's the problem there. Let's just do some click ops and add it. Yeah. It's probably not supposed to do it this way. But uh, if you scroll up, there should be some way to edit it in the bottom pane. Just click, click on, on the here. security, group, security name. group. Yeah. And then um, edit we'll say, in rules. Yeah, yeah, edit. And then just do port 22. Yeah. Add a rule there. That's right. NFS is there. Hold in port rain. Uh, why can't I edit the. Why is it oh, not letting sorry. me change the port? Oh, well, just add a new one, eh? You it says add, add rule at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And, All right. and actually, I think SSH is there. If you just type SSH, it'll, it'll auto populate it for you. Okay. Yeah. 22 and by default. See where it says custom? Just drop down my IP. Yeah. It's even easier than that. Uh, just see where it says custom on the left hand side there? Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's doing what I was doing in Google. Okay, and yeah. then and then you'll just save, save it. And and, we'll and I do know this. We're in good shape. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for folks that, because I ran into this way, deploying forum to DigitalOcean, sometimes it'll look like nothing's happening when you press enter to SSH. And that's how I discovered, oh yeah, wait, I got to update the firewall rules. So, okay. It looks like it's hanging again, but we'll, we'll give it a second maybe. Uh, oh, uh, you didn't to... provide your private key there, eh? You have to do a hyphen I and then give the path to the private key. Okay. But the SS, like the 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 port had to be open as well. So just do space hyphen I. Yeah. Welcome to the stream. Will I be able to get the session for watching from the beginning? Yep. Uh, yep. Well, no. Well, it'll be up uh, later on on Twitch and then on YouTube later. Yeah, um, it will be on Twitch for about two weeks, but we post everything on our YouTube channel, and I'll drop a link again in just a second for you. Okay, and um, all of the stuff is covered in the course, and it's free on Free Code Camp, and it's a bit more streamlined. But this, what's great about this approach here is that we're discovering from like a, a, a like a beginner's perspective a lot of the things that yeah. you know I might I might miss. So, um, did I do um, it wrong with the dat, the hyphen I here? I thought it was just no, that's it looks right to me. So if you want to do a sanity check, what we can do is just uh, put in the IP address there directly. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. Uh, well, yeah, what's it again? It's this one. Just having no luck here. All right. Da, da, da. This is the beauty. The the. The, the struggle in the live stream. It's what makes it interesting. I think your IP um, address might be different than that, though. At least the one in AWS. Yeah, because Pod has its here? own thing. That's right. Yeah, Christina called it because you're because it's oh, not yeah, your yeah, IP yeah. address. It's the machine. So just open it to the world. Make it go to the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get everybody in. I don't know how like, to get give my them your IP. private key too. Yeah. So uh, how do so I just, get my IP yeah. of the GitPod instance? Oh, you don't need it. Just we'll just go switch to the internet. So if you go back to the security group, we'll just go change it to zero uh, dot zero dot zero dot zero uh, uh, forward slash whatever, and uh, everybody will be able to get in. It won't matter. No <laughs> one has your private key, and it's it's not a server that matters. So yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So just, Add um, you can just modify the existing one. It'd probably be better. Okay. Uh, this one here. Uh, so it's the one at the top. TCP twenty two. So if you go to yeah anywhere, you got it. And so just go ahead and uh, save that All room. Right. You gotta It'll delete the off. one you were trying to add. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right, cool. So we got some YOLO click ops going on, and let's do this again. I'm gonna use it with the actual Terraform output because there we go. All right. Uh, Yay. Yes. yes. Yep. Cool. And now if I do ls minus a, we should have hello no, text. Where are you? Denied. Permission denied. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoops. Yeah. Why is it saying permanently added? Let's try again. If it says that, it's because of the key. It doesn't like the key. So the key that we uploaded is either the wrong one or it didn't actually upload it. That's why it would happen. Hmm. Or we generated a thing that it doesn't like. Maybe it didn't generate and it didn't generate an RSA, but I think that's what it does by default. So uh if this happened, what I would do is I would tear down the server. So I would go and type in Terraform Destroy, which we've actually never done yet. So let's type in Terraform Destroy. And we'll tear on everything down. And okay. um what we'll do is we'll comment out our SSH for you know how we did that connection thing? Yeah. Well, it should work now, though, right? Like, if we have everything right, it should work this time. So, I think yeah. that um, so, we should just destroy and just try key. this one more time. While we're okay. here, let's just clean this up a bit. Can we make a um, a new file called terraform.tfvars? Yeah. So, tfvars is where you can store your uh, your environment variables. If you call it terraform.tf, oh, you got backwards. Terraform.tfvars. Okay. And and there's no underscore in, in the on the extension there except dot tfrs. This file will get automatically loaded as our environment variables. Okay. T tfrs. Oh, t. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. It's. Uh, da, da, da. I think I need more coffee. All oh, right. It's just it so... gets it gets uh, the the farther you get in the stream, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. So um, I do want to mention real quick, Nick, 
Um, I have a hard stop. I don't know if you two want to keep streaming after this, but I do have a hard stop in yeah. just a few minutes. I got a meeting I got to jump on, but I know we're at like a place where you all are still doing a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. let me know what uh, you all want to do. Yeah, I, I say we'll go for like maybe 10 or more 15 minutes. Uh, Andrew, I think we can yeah, get this okay. out just to see it. Uh, but if you got to jump off, Christina, no worries. Uh, and thanks for mm -hmm. all the support. Okay, so yeah, so we got the TF vars, and is this just kind of like a regular .env file, or is it a different syntax? Uh, like yeah, with you're right. Braces? Yep. Yeah, just like just like an env file. So here we can just say public underscore key equals double quotations, and then what we'll do is we'll throw in our public key in here, and uh, that'll just clean that up a little bit. Something we should have shown earlier. Okay. Here, I'm just going to exit this. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, what is it? ID. Okay, let's copy that. Oh, I can't, I didn't copy. Hold on a sec. There we go. I, sh I should have used PD copy instead, but anyways. Uh, okay. Let's put that down. Okay, we got our public key. I know that's available right. like on Mac, but I wonder if it's on Linux. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Right. you install it. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's why I was curious because I love PB Copy, but like every time I use Linux, yeah, see. Okay. It's so useful cool. though, eh? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if we got that in there, uh, what you can do? Oh, you don't even have to do that. You can just take out the quotations and do um and the quotations as well. And we'll just yeah. type in var because that's how you get the uh, variables and whatever we named it pub, public dot key public underscore key. So yeah. We called it. Okay. And so now if we do a terraform apply, I'm just hoping it all works. It's auto gen. Uh, no, it's auto approve. And I think you just need a single single. Um, okay. What? And to me, that's odd because normally you'd have like a double. Um, oh, and you got a CD in your folder. That happens to me all the time. Oh, yeah. You got a CD back into your folder, yeah. All right, so let's do that. And an input variable with the name public key is not declared. Oh, right, 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 right. So you, you have the TF bars, but you also have to declare the Terraform environment, like you have to declare the variable. So just anywhere in your Terraform file there, Oh, it's not declared. It's just variable. Okay. Uh, uh, curlies. And then you give it a name. Um, is that how it is? That's the problem when you copy paste things, you just kind of forget. <laughs> oh, you know what? The name is, it's variable followed by double quotations as that you don't give it a name attribute. It's just, you know how like we made the instance? It's yeah. a variable right up in the block there, right? Eh? Okay. Yeah. The double quotations is called public underscore key. And we'll have to give it a type. So just you'll know, under underneath you'll give it a type equals uh, string and string will be in quotations. Okay. Cool. And so now if I run this. And that should work. Oh, so it didn't okay. load it. So if it didn't load it, it's because our TF, our Terraform TF bars files was not named correctly, or yeah. or we put it in uh, the wrong directory. Because remember, uh, you touched it and you were on the outside. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so hold on a sec. Move. Yeah. You know what? We probably could load it based on the file, like how we did the private key. Eh? Okay. Well, it's okay. Here I mean, we go. I, no, it's, it's not a big problem. deal. I'm just saying that we probably could, you know. It's in there. Uh, nope, it's not because it's called terraform.tfvars. I bet it's one directory up. If you go one directory up, I bet it might. Oh, I gotta move it into te into terraform into dot terraform or. Yeah. Well, it just has to be wherever your terraform files are. It has to be there as well. If you go up one directory, there's. But it is in there. What? Because well, I have it all there. What's What's TFVars? Is is that the file? Yeah, did I name it wrong? Well, it's called terraform.tfvars. Oh, right? T okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, no, that's just me. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. All right, in that case. 
So so on the exam, they actually ask you what that file is called, and I called so, it. I actually got that answer wrong, which is really silly. I called it like tfrs dot dot tf or right? something. So like I got it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. I quickly want to say, Andrew, I've enjoyed this. Thank you. I'm going to check out the rest of this later because I will be uploading it to YouTube for everyone later on cool. as well. But I have to hop off. Uh, so I will talk to you all later. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Christina. Yeah. And hopefully this sorts this out. And then uh, it looks like it created the keys. Uh, the So we got our deployer key there. If I come back to here. Oops, let's go back. Da, 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 not secure. Uh, da, 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 EC2. And where was it? I'm in the wrong place. Easy, EC2 dashboard. How come I'm, uh, I'll just go here. Oh, uh, yeah. It's uh, No, you're in the right place. It's just on the left hand side. You got to scroll on down there. The list is so long, ah, okay. it's just hard to see it. You got to scroll on down. Uh, on the left hand side in the in the column there eh? oh yeah instances yeah sorry sorry did i pass it already yeah, yeah. Okay. uh that's my bad it's hard to find it's hard to find honestly if you go it's it's at the way at the bottom i think okay yeah so i don't know we if we go. have to delete did it did it complain again or no it, it regenerated the key oh wait Least login as the user rather than the root. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. So, uh, you, the um, the connection information, we have to say yeah. what user we want to use, and we want to be EC two. If you go check my yeah. code, see what I have there on the on the third tab there. I bet it's set to EC two. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's what I did. So, user. We'll, we'll do a Terraform yeah. destroy. Hey, Proxzilla. Okay. And in terms of, because we're doing this, all of this right now, like in terms of when folks do this, like say, say I'm trying to build up my infrastructure, you know, is it, is this a lot of trial and error? Somebody just comes in and does what we're doing. And then once they're happy with it, yeah. they're just like, okay. So, yeah. and in terms of costs, when you're messing around with this stuff, is it really like pennies or is it, pennies. uh, okay. Pennies. I mean, like we're using the Avis free tier, so like it's nothing. But like, okay, unless you're launching like machine learning instances, yeah, you're almost always dealing with pennies. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, uh, gotcha. You, as long as you remember to turn the stuff off, so um, because you'll have to set the explicit, like you have to explicitly set say what size you want. You'll look at the cost at that time of, um, yeah. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. But it, the thing is, once you have your code, like you basically just co you just copy past everything you have, or you leverage the modules, and the modules do okay. save you a lot of time. Where like, there's probably like Anton probably has written an EC2 instance module that like makes this okay. so much easier, like in two seconds. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so now we're gonna SSH into. Oh, well, remember we just destroyed it, so now we got to um, deploy it again. Oh yeah, we did. Oh sorry, we didn't apply yeah. it, right? Sorry. Yeah. But you can see, like, it, it doesn't, like, because there's so much trial and error, like, you learn Terraform so fast. You know what I mean? It's auto -approved. Yeah, what is it? auto proof. thank you. Uh, okay, so we're going to let that go. Come back here, and we should see terminated, and it's recreating. So if we are successful, then after this, we'll just talk a little bit about modules, and we'll just take take a look at some maybe not yeah. deploy them but uh we'll just take a look and, and kind of understand why that would uh be yeah no sounds good uh i'm gonna have to have a hard stop probably in 15 Three, minutes fair, fair. um just because uh somebody will probably not appreciate if i skip the, their one-on-one -on -one meeting <laughs> <laughs> okay so we outputted the public ip okay so now we're gonna that looks all okay we come back mm -hmm. here it is running so we should be able to ssh into it now right yes yeah okay uh and it should be ec2 user at i'm just gonna 
copy paste it, it in yep, minus go for it. i you got double quotation tilde dot die. h oh yeah thanks okay ssh i d r s a that looks good eh okay i think so yeah yes oh, fingers crossed all right we're oh, in so ls minus a hello text yes so if i go to there shouldn't be anything in there but right. cool we got the file awesome cool okay right, that's so... cool i know i know that took us a little longer but hey that's just you know what infrastructure is like um i have a meme like where it's like you know like there's like uh, like a skeleton and like how long it takes you to do something have you seen that meme before it's like it's a yeah, skeleton yeah, yeah. that's sitting on like a, a a bench or I don't know. So that anytime I'm doing infrastructure as code, it's always like this, always. Um, so let's yeah. go take a look at uh, some modules. So we'll go back to the registry.terraform.io. Okay, and uh, it's okay to log uh, exit the SSH session, right? Yeah, we're all pretty much done here. I, I just again, like we're not going to run any more code for today. Yeah. Um, but we'll just make our way over to the registry. Okay. Where was that? Is that here? No, that's providers. Yeah. Yep. If you if you scroll okay. all the way to the top and click the registry logo in the top left corner. Yeah. Okay. So Browse there's modules. modules. Yeah. And so like if you were to go, let's actually look at the EC2 one, what uh um that uh Anton has here. If you type in EC2, it might show up. Or AWS instance might might be a, a better one to type in AWS instance. Okay. Would help if I spelt it correctly. Yeah. Okay. Um, just type in VPC, because that okay. way we'll get to the what the like. I'm not, I don't want the VPC module, but this is an easy way to get to it. So it's showing. See where it says Terraform AWS modules VPC. Yeah. Yeah, that one right it's there, there. The first one under modules. Yep. And see okay. where it says um. Anton, or sorry, Terraform AWS modules published August. 31st, 2021, Terraform yeah. AWS modules. Click on that. Yeah. On the Terraform AWS modules link. Okay. Go on down this here. We should be Anton's able to work. Yeah. And so in here, there should be probably one for EC2. Like, click view more. Okay. VPC is really popular because you always have to set up like 100 things for VPCs. That's this one here? Well, that's not the one we want. We want, we want to find the one for virtual machines, EC2. You have to scroll down and hit view more. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, EC2, EC2 instance? There it is. Yeah. Okay. And so if you scroll on down, we'll get examples there. Okay. Okay. And so I know it looks the same. Yeah. But the thing is, is that there's a lot of stuff that you can extend here. So, you know, if you needed a security group, you could write a DSL in here to like say like to create the security group, or or this could be creating a security group. Scroll down, let's see what else we have here. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's like a unique example here. This is probably not a very good example. Uh, let's go over to, let's go over to the VPC one because that's a very good example, I think. Yeah. This one. So okay. I would never, ever, ever use the AWS provider to make VPC. I would always use this module here. So if you scroll on down, we get an example. Yeah, okay, I'll just, whoops, I didn't mean to click that. Hold on a sec. Okay. okay. There's Anton, if you want to give him a follow on GitHub. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. And cool. so see so here, we... if you had yeah. to write this using the provider, you'd have to write a resource for, uh, for route tables, for internet gateways, for... Uh, subnets for the VPC itself. You'd have to write this be giant, okay? okay? But instead, you have this small DSL, okay? Now, I just want to okay. give this as a comparison for one other example. So um, I wrote my own module, and we're going to take a yeah. look at it. So we're going to say AWS. Um, I'm just going to find the link here for it. Do you want to share your screen? Um, No, it's okay. I'm just going to go find the okay. repo. Yeah, okay. And wh while you're finding that, I mean, uh, I, I think the, the going with the modules, I, this, I think this, at least from like 
you know, my very limited knowledge of uh, deploying infrastructure, uh, going with infrastructure as code, having it in a module means just like in programming, you're encapsulating a lot of stuff. So like in this module, you were just passing in like IP addresses, the one that Anton, we were looking at a second ago for the subnets yeah. and stuff, you know, and then like all that other plumbing, it's, it's, it's encapsulated in that module, which makes it just more like Lego blocks kind of, you know, it's the same reason why you program stuff in like modules or plugins and same kind of thing. So I, I shared the link there in the uh, Twitch uh, uh, chat there, if you can just pull it up. Yeah. Okay. Do, do, do. Just going to paste it in here. I didn't click on it because uh, I have the Twitch running in Chrome and I, I'm in Edge oh, over okay. here because uh, I see. It, uh, it's because it's the web capture, uh, the closed captioning runs in Chrome only. Mm. But anyways, uh, okay, so we're back on Exam Pro. There's this Terraform ex uh, AWS Apache example. So, so, um, so what are we looking registry. for in here? This is on the registry. Okay. That's all. Like you, all you have to do is connect a GitHub repo that's named a particular way. And so, uh, this is a, a one I created. And so the way you would using your code is you'd say module Apache, and you give it the source. Uh, there, I'm actually giving yeah. the the relative source, but you you could also give the path to the actual um, one on Terraform registry, which would not be that path there. Uh, and then notice okay. that I can define any kind of things I want to pass through to it. But to create a module, mm -hmm. you've actually been making one the entire time, right? Like you could publish, like you know the code we wrote. We could just publish it. So if you scroll up and just take a look at the code here, yeah, all the way up into just keep all the way to the top to see the structure here. See, like, yeah. main TF, outputs TF, variables TF, versions TF, like, they're all treated as one file. And this, okay, all okay, you gotcha. have to do to, to modules, give it a path or give it, like, you know, like, if it's, like, a GitHub path or a local source or the Terraform registry path. And that's all it yeah. takes. And so we could write our own for form. It could be, like, module form. It could be, like, do you want to use um, RDS, like, separately? Or do you want to use one on the EC2 instance, like, to save money? Do you want to have a okay. load balancer or no, you could say true or false, right? And so ba basically people could quickly set up their form if we had that. And you could have it to be the, the cost effective or highly available effective or highly available. Okay. Uh, Discord died. Hold on a sec. Oh, Discord. All right. Oh, yeah. We're back. Sorry. I don't know what's up with Discord. Uh... Well, it's it's not necessarily Discord. It just could be my computer dying. Uh, okay, we're so, back. I lost my screen share, but um, if you want to finish your thought there, I'll share my screen. Yeah. Now. So the thing is, is that you know, like we could write our own form module, and it'd be very easy to go from having a very cost-effective thing to upscaling very quickly, and it wouldn't be that complex, yeah. right? And so you know, that is something that would be really cool to have. Um, and you know, hopefully, people will kind of have an idea of what uh, what um, you can do with Terraform. And I think now that we're at the end of the stream, it's my turn to plug, right, Nick? Yeah, 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 go ahead, plug. So what I'm gonna do uh, is gonna go ahead and share my screen. I'm just gonna pull some things off the screen here. And yeah, it's I'll stop sharing. The plug away. And so I'm just gonna go ahead, find my main screen here, and just tell me if you're able to see my screen. Yeah, I'll get it. Uh, we're on AWS. Okay, so for people who don't know, I uh, I have my own website called Exam Pro. It's at exampro.co.com, something totally else. else. And we have courses for everything. And in particular, we have a Terraform course here. And this one only costs $21. But if you don't have the money, you can actually sign up for a free tier. It gets you access to all the videos. You don't have to pay anything for that. And you'll also get one full free practice exam. So you pretty much can pass the exam for free. However, if you want to support more additional content, because uh, people that pay uh, that helps me produce more free courses uh, uh, like this one, uh, you can okay. get access to additional practice exams, cheat sheets, all the lecture slides you can download. Every single um, video has Quizlets on it. It's a great way to learn. And there's also support. So if you have questions, you can ask stuff there. If you want to follow me and learn more stuff, I'm at Twitter at Andrew Brown. Okay. So there Pretty I am. Cool. Uh, it's great to follow me because I'm always dropping free things or uh, sharing uh, additional free content here as well. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, just wanted to say 
thanks again, Andrew. I learned a lot today. I Like I said, I've never touched Terraform until today. Uh, it, you guided me really well there. And uh, I know Christina's uh, gone now, but thanks, Christina, too, for just uh, helping with the debugging as we go along. Uh, yeah, it was really, really cool to see this all in action. And yeah, just wanted to say thanks again. And uh, we will see you all next week, folks. And uh, yeah, thanks for all the new follows today. We had a ton of folks.